Sports Detroit, the heart of the fan. on the Detroit Airways. Hey, listen, it feels good driving in today where it all started, back home, right where I belong, like you said, Chef. Boy, everybody's shaking your hand, giving you a high <laughs> I five. I feel like the mayor around so here. So glad right you are in. The <laughs> you are the mayor around here, you baby. You are the mayor around here. You've been here long enough. Craig Monroe, you've been here plenty, and you know that there's about 13 days left in training camp. What have you seen from this team so far? Well, what I've seen so far is the togetherness. I have seen guys have great camaraderie, uh, guys hanging out off the field, which bleeds over into the field where you can get the most out of each other. But there's also some positions that are up for grabs. Guys like Badu, Carpenter, these guys are going to have to continue to stay the course and do what, they, what they're what they capable of doing to solidify that job. Now, competition is always good, and the Tigers right now, going down the stretch, have some really good competition going. Yeah, I love what I saw today, going into that clubhouse early this morning you can feel that chemistry but you also know that guys realize this last two weeks it's important it's an important stretch to make us make a little bit of noise show AJ show this staff that hey I can help this ball club win a kill Badu Tyler Alexander some of those pieces that are really trying to show hey I'm here to stay and I can help this team win ball games really important start from Matt Manning today Joey Wentz Alex Fayedo following all three of them vying for a spot in that starting rotation Austin Meadows will be in the outfield we've got him mic'd up throughout our broadcast in the second inning AJ Hinch joins us in the third and Craig Monroe will talk to players throughout our teleclass. Glad you're with us. Here it comes. First pitch. Right around. Here we corner. go. Here we go. <laughs> That's a really tight spot. I used to hate parallel parking. Me too. Buick Envision. Built around you. All of you. GM employees with a current eligible Buick lease get this low mileage lease on this 2023 Buick Envision Preferred for $2.99 per month. Four slices of deep dish and a Pepsi on ice. Just $5.99, yeah. Little Caesars price is nice. Bite, bite, sip, sip. Do the deep dish combo mambo. For lunch. Pizza, pizza. Nice looking crowd here in Lakeland. Spring training Tigers baseball is presented by Mary Grove Onyx. Beautiful facility and a pretty day, too. Got some clouds, but uh, the wind has kicked up a little bit. It's a comfortable 71 degrees. So I we're getting agree. closer to feel like the great state of Michigan. Matt Manning gets the call. Craig Monroe, what do you need to see from him? Well, I'd love to see him attack the strike zone. I think every pitch that he throws, he has to throw it with conviction. Uh, but he, it, I think it starts with commanding the strike zone, utilizing all of his pitches. Love to see a little bit more of tick up in his fastball. Love to see him get up to 94, 95. That's when his fastball plays for me. And he's got to be able to use both sides of the plate as well, Chef. It's his fourth start of the spring. Here's the defense behind him, brought to you by Glassman Automotive. Riley Green in center with Austin Meadows and Akil Badu to each side. You've got Colt Keith, a promising prospect at third base. Andre Lipsy is called up from the minor league camp to play first base. He's been red hot offensively, and Jake Rogers will do the catching. Let's take a look at the New York lineup presented by your Metro Detroit Chevy dealers. There's three names in this lineup you'll really recognize. Aaron Hicks, who's the designated hitter in batting third. Isaiah kiner Falefa is playing center field, which is a little odd. And Estevan Floreal is playing in right field. Matt Manning, as we mentioned, making his fourth start of the spring. Trying to bounce back from last Saturday when he allowed five runs on six hits. His first pitch is low and inside. And it's 1-0 to Anthony Volpe. Yeah, this is going to be a very important start for Matt Manning. Volpe drives one to center. Green is there. Two pitches, one away. And I think the Tigers, are what they're looking for for Manning is to do exactly what he just did there. Attack these hitters, make them swing the bat, but also utilize all your pitches. But 
allow the fastball to set up those secondary pitches. I'm going to look for that today and see if Manny is able to command the strike zone and pitch ahead in the count. Faces Oswald Peraza. Tigers would like to see Manning use more of his pitches and instead of just up and down in the zone, use it more side to side. Yeah, I think that's going to be important for him. A lot of times as hitters, when you know that a pitcher is only going to work north and south, uh, you can pick a spot. You can start thinking, well, I'm just going to look up against Manning or I'm going to look down. Well, when he's able to use all four quadrants of the strike zone, puts the hitter now on the defense and have you guessing in that batter's box. That's his arsenal. It's a good one when he's dialed in right and when he's throwing strikes like that made quick work of Peraza and Manning has looked good in the first two hitters. Yeah that's exactly what the Tigers wanted to see. They wanted to see him attack hitters and he's attacked them with a really good fastball there. Look at that paint job there and freezes Peraza. You, know, you talk to Matt Manning about his spring because some people are a little concerned and he says I I'm working on certain things. He feels what well, he feels good number one. But number two, he feels like his stuff is, is getting close. It's playing right. Well, you got to be careful, though, when you're working on things because you still want to utilize your strength and what has allowed you to still get to this level. And the level that he's, the next level that he has to get to is where he can be dominant and be more efficient at the major league level. We saw it in the minor leagues. And there's no question, guys, what we have to see it here at the major league level. Aaron Hicks. Turned on one, sent it into the netting down the first base line. That's a fine line, isn't it? It really Working is. On stuff and making sure that uh, you know, you're still competing for a spot. It's two and one to Aaron Hicks, who's the designated hitter for New York today. Drives one foul. Hicks looking to bounce back. Had a tough year last year. We hit 216. Not a lot of power. Only eight home runs, 40 RBIs. And that ballpark in New York, it's a hit a friendly ballpark. Just can't seem to, seem to stay healthy, can he? Yeah, he's had that issue throughout his career. Matter of fact, coming into this season, he's only played 100 games or more in his career three times. That's it. The 2 2 line to left for a base hit. No, no, no. Aaron Boone in his sixth season, 99 wins a year ago, a winning percentage of 60% in his five years in New York, and ranks eighth all time on the Yankees' managerial wins list. This is Isaiah Kiner Falefa, a former Gold Glove shortstop, now a center fielder, at least in this game for New York here this afternoon. Take strike one. Yeah, it looks like Aaron Boone's going to use him as a utility player. He's yeah. Play all three positions in the infield. Taps it foul, and Manning wins the race to two strikes. And Shep, as you alluded to, playing center field is going to get a chance to play some outfield, showing some versatility. So the Tigers aren't the only team to ask for that versatility from their players. The Yankees are in that mix as well, with more than just Kiner Falefa, but highlighted here today. And he looks at strike three. 15 pitches gets Matt Manning through the first. Here comes the Tigers' first at bats. So I'm Valley Sport. A man is family. St. Patrick's Day. Here's the Tigers batting order presented by your Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. Jonathan Scope with his first game back since the World Baseball Classic. Nick Maton had two hits and scored Detroit's lone run last night. And Ryan Kreitler has hits in five of his last six in spring. Austin Meadows leads off. And then it'll be Scope and then Riley Green. Now... Meadows and company will fee see pitches from Domingo Herman. Herman only made 14 starts last year, but there's a lot to like from this young man. He's got a good fastball, utilizes both sides of the plate. His go-to pitch will be that changeup. 
Likes to throw it to both left-handers and right. -handers. O2 to Austin Meadows. Herman delivers a little high. Originally, we thought Austin Meadows was going to be mic'd up for us. We're going to talk to him in the second inning. We had some technical difficulties, so we apologize for that. That's not going to be possible here today, but A.J. Hinch will join us in the third, and my friend Craig Monroe will talk to players later on in our telecast. Meadows sends one to center field. Kiner Falefa has room. There's one away. Really like that bat, that at bat there by Meadows. Fell behind in the count, 0-2. But still got himself a good pitch that he can handle, and he put a good swing on it. Just unfortunate, tough luck. Hit the ball hard to dead center field. He's looking pretty good. So he, he really he's has looked good in the batter's box. He, he really has. I like that. I like the direction, Shep. I like that he's utilizing the big part of the field. We know he's got some power. He's, you know, when he does play, he hits the ball out of the ballpark. You're high on him, right? I really am. Okay. Anytime you have a guy that can you know, drive, hit over 20-something home runs, drive in over 100 runs, and you can put him back in your lineup, he definitely can be a difference maker. Good to see Jonathan Scope back in camp. Takes it inside after a stint with the World Baseball Classic. A.J. Hinch kind of woke up to the first game that he saw Scope's face. He said he had walked and probably would have texted me. That would have been fine. But <laughs> being that he knocked or had a couple of uh, punch outs, uh, I didn't hear a word from him. So that was kind of funny. But it's, uh, it was funny. It's good to see him back. <laughs> <laughs> no, and Scope looks good. I thought last year came in maybe a little heavy. But this year, you can definitely tell his offseason program worked for him. He looks well. looks really good. Slim down. Ahead in the count, 2-1. Taps it foul, and now it's even. Yeah, got to keep him in the zone, right, Simo? Easier said than done, but in order for him to be a really productive player and get more opportunities against righties, he's got to stay in the zone. Yeah, I thought last year he really started to chase entirely too many pitches out of the strike zone. And he didn't have the kind of season that really and truly we all thought he would have after the good season. This one's in the air to center. Kiner Falefa. The year prior. But those are good swings there. I've seen a couple of guys go up there with the right approach. You know, we talked today with Scott Harris, the president of baseball operations here with the Tigers, and he just talked about con controlling the strike zone, hunting pitches that you can handle. And so far, the first couple batters of this of this game, they're doing exactly that. They're hunting pitches that they can con that they can handle. This is Riley Green. It's interesting you say that. You, you thought those were good swings by Jonathan Scope. How do you define that? Define well, any time that you, you fall behind in the count and you're in a defense mode as a hitter, you're on the defense trying to protect, and you're able to allow that ball to travel and still be able to barrel him up, that, for me, is a good at bat and a good swing. That's a really good swing from Riley Green. He's got a two-out single to right. Love this kid here. Fall behind. I mean, got ahead in the count, 1-0. And then you start hunting the pitches that you know you can really get the barrel to and do damage. There's a little slider. Didn't do much down and in to the lefty, but I like the swing there. Very short and directly to the baseball. Opens the door for Nick Maton. Chip, I've already heard the, the nickname. It's the, they say they call him the Wolfman. Yeah, Wolfie. Yeah. <laughs> he embraces it. Yeah, he'll howl a little bit. Yeah. A couple of hits, including a double in the loss to the Phillies yesterday. He has been, I think, just about everything they had hoped for. Huge addition to this team. And, guys, his impact in the clubhouse has been felt already. Huge, yeah. Him and Verlin coming over from Philly, that trade of Soto. These two guys have made a huge difference inside that clubhouse. And he gets hit by a pitch. Yeah, this one here, this pitch got away from Domingo Herman here. Mates on left hand hitter, but look how that ball just keeps running in up. Up and in and catches that back, that back elbow, it looks like. Yeah, you notice he's not gonna let him know how much it hurts. No, you can't let him know. Yeah, that's the kind of dude he is, yeah. He's a scrappy son of a guy. I mean, he's I, that's why I think Tiger fans are gonna really like him. You know, I mean he's he, he kind of pours that out while he's playing. Emotional player, high energy. This is Andre Lipsius. Solid spring for Lipsius so far. And Chef Lipsius is a kid that really understands the strike zone. 
knows his strengths. High walk, low strikeout guy. If they could get a little bit more power out of him, it'd be great. But he looks the part so far. He's quickly behind 0 and 2. Well, Shep, I'll just tell you this. He's got the right number on. <laughs> yes, I mean, he does. He's got the right number on to do some coming. major damage. So <laughs> that 27 looks good on his back. <laughs> <laughs> Those are broad shoulders. Yes, sir. A heavy number to live up to. Former third round pick out of Tennessee waits on the 0 2. Reaches out, pokes it to right center. Green will be waved home. Andre Lipsius drives in the game's first run with, a, with his 11th RBI of the spring. Guys, that's a piece of hitting right here by that young man. There's a lot. Of when you start watching his approach and you watch how smooth and how soft that front foot lands where the head doesn't move, take a look at this swing here. That's a pitch off the plate away. Didn't pull off of it. Stays on it. Takes what the pitcher gives and drives that ball the opposite way. There's a really good chance you're going to see him make his major league debut this year. I mean, every all everything that I've heard, everything that I've read, and now getting a chance to see it with my own eyes, this kid's going to be a good player. See, you know, there's going to be a lot of fluctuation in the Tigers roster this season. You're going to see a lot of different guys. It's going to be all about the matchups. The Tigers will hunt matchups this year. Starting from day one, Akil Badu looks at one outside. Well, they also have the players on the roster now to, to be able to do exactly that hunt matchups, the versatility, that righty left handed matchup with a guy like Mayton who can play third base, he plays second base. Struggles a little bit against left handers, but really does an excellent job of driving the ball against right handed pitching. They had to reset the pitch clock, thus the delay, because you saw the catcher, Rodolfo Duran, go out and signal to his infield what they want to do in case Lipsius tries to steal. And now a disengagement from Herman. 20 seconds on that pitch clock. When there's traffic on the bases, 15 when they are empty. There's the 0 2 to Akil Badu. There's the disengagement rules. Pitcher gets two. On the third, you must create an out. Otherwise, it's a balk. A one time out per plate appearance for the hitters. Five to deliver. He does. But do looks at a strike. And I don't mind that take there at all. It's a 3 0 count. That means as a hitter, you're loading up to attack one zone, one area. And if it's not there, you take it. It's one of the things that, again, A.J. Hinch and his staff has been preaching get pitches that you can absolutely hammer. In the air, right field with some carry, but stays in the ballpark. And that'll do it. But the Tigers do draw first blood on the RBI single from Andre Lipsius. Now's the time to save on big projects. Save on. Tigers baseball on Valley Sports is brought to you by Comerica Bank. Raise your expectations of what a bank can be. Come to Comerica. And by Wallside Windows, we can do that. We are the factory. Young and old alike here in Lakeland today. Pretty cool stuff when you see all these folks here. This one gets under the glove of Ryan Kreidler and a leadoff single for Estevan Florial. Surprised me there that Kreidler didn't make that play, given that he's probably the best defensive shortstop that the Tigers have on this roster. That's a compliment to Ryan Kreidler that when he doesn't make a play, it's surprising. It, it really does because <laughs> he's got such great footwork. He has tremendous range, and I, I kind of expect him to make every play, which is so unfair. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just the way you feel. But I feel good, good about him yeah. when the ball is hit to him. You feel like, well, I got a man there and he's going to make that play. And he gets it. He understands it. He, he's, a matter of fact, he embraces that stuff. He says, I love it when pitchers are saying, I want that ball hit to him. This is Wilmer Defoe. And there's the timeout by the hitter.
Devo's the third baseman. Quick throw over to first. That's the first disengagement from Matt Manning here in this plate appearance from Wilmer Defo. There goes the runner. And he bunts it to third. Colt Keith on the charge. Bear hands it, but not in time. Perfectly laid down bunt by Wilmer Defo. And the Yankees have the first two men aboard here in the second. Yeah, he just does everything right on this bunt. Gets the hands, get the bat head way out in front. Take a look here, get the bat out in front, kind of catches that baseball, deadens it a little bit. Perfect direction toward Cole Keith. Cannot get the speedy. Diffo. This is Billy McKinney. He takes strike one from Matt Manning. That's an encouraging sign, too. It's not always about how hard Matt Manning may be throwing, but it's the pitching mix and the first pitch strikes, which is important. Low it away to make it one and one. So like most pitchers, though, these pitchers want to win the race to two strikes. I mean, that's when they can open up their, their arsenal. They can kind of elevate a fastball to try to get you to chase or throw that slider down and in and try to get guys that, especially left-handers, as Billy McKinney's in the McKinney's in the batter's box now to swing over the top of that pitch. That one's just outside and it's two and one. It's interesting the Manning playbook hated his slider in the first game, able to land it in the second. But they're almost like forcing him to throw his change up a little bit. It's outside. And now he's behind. McKinney three and one. Yeah, but this is when it's important. When you fall behind as a pitcher, Manning's three one now. So important to be able to throw those secondary pitches. You don't want to give in to the hitter. You want to just groove a fastball here. So a change up plays, curveball change up, slider works. The three one. Lost him, and the bases are loaded with nobody out. Manning is probably at his best when he's controlling his slider. Let's see what he can control against Rodolfo Duran, the catcher. The number eight hitter stands in there where the base is loaded and a confab at the, mine, at the mound first for the entire infield to see what they're going to do. It's a big start for Manning. It's a Big follow-up for Joey Wentz and Alex Fajardo today. Here's the projected rotation with Mize and Scoobal on the I.L. I feel good about it. Eduardo Rodriguez at the top. Uh, nice and glad to see Spencer Turnbull back. And how about getting Matthew Boyd back in the Tigers uniform? And now you start to think about Matt Men and how important this start is for him. There's some guys that are coming. Brisky and Fajardo, as you alluded to, Ship. These guys are bidding. They're, they're putting some pressure on Manning to go out and perform well. They'll have to monitor a lot of things with this starting staff just because of the limitations they forced on the organization by not throwing many innings last year. In there for a strike, he's quickly ahead 0-2. But you like the likes of Joey Wentz and what I, I remember back when he pitched in his hometown in Kansas City. And he was dominant. Reaching out and following it away. Think about this. The team leader in starts was Tarek Skubal with 21. He led the team in innings pitch with 117 and wins with seven. That's not a recipe for success. Only three pitchers threw 100 innings or more. So you've got to get deeper in that starting staff. Another row two. Swung on and missed. That's a big strikeout. For Manning, his third of the day already. Yeah, I love the fact that Manning got ahead 0-2 there. And now he put the hit on the defense, and he was able to just really throw a quality pitch. And it's kind of pitching backwards. So many times we get to two strikes, we're looking for something all speed. But Manning had his foot on the gas pedal. That's 90-plus fastball painted on the outside part of the plate. Now he faces the number nine hitter in Jake Bowers. And a first pitch strike to him. That one popped the glove at 94. Good sign there. And you got that little kick in the velo on the fastball. 
Missed just away to even it up. Yeah, I like the thought process there from Manning, showing him inside, showing Bowers inside, and then he wants to go away with the bases loaded. He's just trying to get that ground ball, and get himself out of this jam. Bowers takes strike two. One two is outside. Manning got married in the offseason, so congratulations there. Good for him. On the first round pick, ninth overall in 2016. It was honeymoon in Africa. See if he can throw this high fastball right here. Get Bowers a chase. Well, he was on the same page as Simo, just couldn't get him to chase. Now three and two. Now you got to come in. You definitely got to come in. But again, this is what's so important where guys have command of all of their pitches. Where you can throw, you're not just married to your fastball. You can throw your secondary. That slider could be a good pitch for him right now. Because Byers, there's no question he's shown some patience already. He's looking for a pitch in his zone. But with two strikes, he has to expand that zone. Let's see if many can make a quality pitch right here. 17th pitch of the inning coming here. The 3 2 popped up. Shallow left. Kreidler's out. He's got it. Good pitch in a tough spot, two away. And I really like there again how many attacks uh, Jake Bowers there. Stayed motion, started him inside, but then he went away, away, away. So he's got him looking out there. And then look at this little cutter. More like a slider there on the inside part of the plate, and he ties up Bauer. And he gets the second out of the inning. Here's Anthony Volpe. Takes one low and away. Volpe was the Yankees' first round pick in 2019, drafted 30th overall. This kid's been impressive all season. I mean, all spring training. Matter of fact, he's impressed. The Aaron Judge of the Yankees so much so they're playing him a lot at short moving Isaiah Kiner Falefa around he's considered the fifth rated prospect in baseball coming into the year he's got some pop he's got 21 hit 21 home runs last year split some time between double A and triple A there's the one one to him got under it left field Badu's got it, and Manning, who loaded the bases with nobody out, gets out of it with a punch out and two pop outs. Come here. You know why people are always looking? You know? All the spring training games and every out of market game live or on demand the spring training with MLB.tv. Blackout and other restrictions do apply. Visit MLB.tv for details and to register today. Bottom third of the Tigers lineup here in the second against Domingo Herman. That means Ryan Kreidler, Colt Keith, and Jake Rogers for the Tigers. We've got the RBI single from Andre Lipsius in the first to take the early lead. Kreidler fouls it away. It's one and one. Really enjoyed the conversation that we had with Ryan Kreidler today, talking about the adjustments uh, that he had to make in his swing. It starts with his confidence, but he also said basically he has to continue to hit to his strengths. Fly ball center field. Isaiah Kiner Falefa has been busy in center. He's got it. That's his third put out already, and there's one away in the Tigers' second. All right, here comes Cole Keith, and I'm really excited to hear your thoughts on, on Cole Keith, who coming into the season ranked the sixth best prospect of the Tigers organization. So I've got a chance to see this kid play as that much. Watch some videos, and this kid can flat out hit. Like that. That is pounded. Right center field. Goodbye. Big power from Colt Keith. He goes yard for the second time this spring to give the Tigers a 2-0 lead. Just love the fact that this young man goes up to the batter's box and he's looking to do damage. 
but he's doing damage in, in the zone. Pitches that he likes to hunt. And that was a fastball inside. Just take a look to, to this swing here, how the ball jumps. That's loud. <laughs> That's loud off his bat. I'm just picturing Simo screaming from the booth at Comerica Park one day. Hit it like you live, kid. <laughs> That's right. Hit it hard. Hit it hard. Right, baby. I love it. <laughs> 427 feet. That gets me excited, Jeff, when that ball jumps off that bat like that. Makes a different sound. Did you did you watch the reaction from Esteban Florio, the right fielder? He just turned and said, hot dog, please. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. Uh, this is Jake Rogers. Ahead in the count, 2-0. Oh. In there for a strike. Nice to see Jake back in the trenches with the boys. Had some injuries and was away from the team. Got him his, he's back healthy. Yeah, we talked to him the other day. And it's on all our Valley Sports Detroit platforms, social media platforms. He, that was hard for him because it's the first time he's ever been on the shelf and away from the game of baseball in his life. So it, it, it took some getting used to and he didn't like it. He's loving oh. spring right now but not loving that. That's the second hit Tiger batter today. Yeah, it just tells me Herman is really trying to make a conscious effort of getting that ball on the inside part of play. Here's a two-seamer that gets away from him. And he catches him. Looks like on that elbow pad. But it looks like he caught a lot of elbow as well. The throwing arm that was the problem for Rogers a year ago. But I don't know, no doubt sting for a while, huh? Yeah, that was gonna leave a mark. And that was gonna be sore <laughs> tomorrow when he wakes up. Rogers talking his way to stay in the game. Tough to get him out when he's missed as much time as he did a year ago. Oh, yeah. He wants to play. He just pick up a little dirt, put it on it. Like, Let's go. Staying in the action. Austin Meadows will stand in for the second time against Domingo Herman. Meadows flew to center in the first. Take strike one. Meadows on the off day on Wednesday took Riley Green, Spencer Torkelson, Matt Whistler out on his boat. Just a casual day. Some light fishing, but overall, just a good way to hang out with the guys. Rips one down the right field line foul. You didn't get the invite? I did not. I would have loved to get that invite. <laughs> you know, just get out on the water. That's where I, I, I like to live. I got on the water. Little, little, just doing a little fishing ship, just a little bit. They were they were all real appreciative, and they, they just they love that camaraderie. I, I do, too. Yeah. And, I, and I love that they're hanging out together yeah. off the field. Again, I just truly believe in a, a team that loves being around each other. They play for each other. There's no question it helps build camaraderie, and it helps you play better on the field. You had that. You had that with with your really good teams that you played. Oh, oh we definitely did. We, we, we had it in 06, for sure. We had a good mix of veterans and some young players. No, 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 no. 02 has popped Dylan up. Dylan made it very clear that he was going to treat everybody the same, except for the first and the 15th. Yeah. That was when you got your checks, so your checks were a little different. You know? The rookie checks like they are, are now. Smaller. No, the rookie <laughs> checks are a little smaller. You know, in the big league, you know, the veterans, their checks are a little bigger, Shep. So, but the, the the thought is, you know, you always you got to treat everybody the same, and, and that's one of the things that I feel like AJ Hitch does an excellent job of. He treats all these guys the same, and they all feel important. Yeah, but he, I think he was really encouraged when we talked about that with him. He was really encouraged that you, you got a, a, a somewhat veteran in Meadows taking out the young guys and how appreciative Green and Torkelson were just to, to hang out and spend some time with one another away from baseball. Yeah, it's fun. And I'm glad that Austin Meadows has taken on that responsibility of being the leader, especially right now with the WBC going on. 
Baez is out, not here. You've got Miggy out. And those guys are leaders as well. Cabrera, the captain of Team Venezuela. Austin Meadows sits down after swinging at strike three, two away. Yeah, this is Herman's go-to pitch right here. He can speed you up with that fastball, and then he can pull the string on you with a filthy changeup. He gets Meadows out in front. There's Jonathan Scope. He flew out to center. First pitch swinging and a fly ball to center field. Kiner Falefa takes control, but the Tigers pad their lead thanks to Colt Keith. Muscles up, a no doubter. Launched 427 feet. 2 0 Tigers. A.J. Hinch joins us on the other side. In the Upper Peninsula, it may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Detroit Tigers. Uh, some of the best conversations really are off mic. Cole Keith with the home run to give Detroit a 2 0 lead. We welcome in his manager, A.J. Hintz. How's Jake Rogers? Obviously staying in the game, but how's he doing? Yeah, he's a catcher. He's going to stay in. He's not like an outfielder <laughs> like Simo, who would have definitely just gone right inside the right field line and gone to the clubhouse. <laughs> Keith tested defensively. He's worked hard on that part of his game. Lipsia stays on the bag for a fine out to start the third. We might have to invite him back full time. We <laughs> right. Keith down like a week ago, and he's playing about every other day and doing things like this. What's the most encouraging sign from those these young guys who know they're not going to break camp with you, but they're still relishing this yeah. opportunity? Just their, just their comfort, you know, and their pace of play, their understanding. They're they're seeing guys they recognize, whether it's on our team um, or on the other side, where they've seen them on TV. They follow baseball. I mean, Cole Keith loves baseball, loves following the game. And now he's over there, um, you know, seeing guys on the same field and he's doing well. And um, just the comfort of standing on your own two feet in a, in a clubhouse with Javi and Miggy and, and, and the guys that he knows are, are you know, bigger names. And, and he's feeling comfortable. Well, what are you seeing from Manning today? Looks good. Got he, out of that uh, bases loaded jam there. He does. I mean, that was the best inning of, of, of his spring. Um, with his intent and with his energy and with his stuff. I mean, I, you never want these guys to get into this kind of trouble, but when they do, um, him having to exert a little bit of energy, pitch out a little bit of jam, have a little bit of stress, and then come out of it, it can be a really positive inning. So, for the velo from the from the onset was good. His secondary stuff has been good. So, a lot to like. Still looking at uh, Aaron Hicks after following one off his leg. You've got three guys who are vying for starting roles in your rotation. Why Wentz and Fiedo after Manning today? Uh, a couple reasons. I mean, one is um, it's nice to kind of put these guys all up the same day and have them face similar competition. And, um, you know, it's hard getting all. We have so many starting pitching options, knock on wood, compared to last season when we went through 17. We don't want to use that many, but um, it's nice to see them kind of toe up on the same day and and do their part. We're running out of innings, which is why you see a lot of guys starting to get shuffled out of camp. Um, Manning's going to go three or four. Wentz is going to go three. Um, Fiedo will go two or three, kind of depending on what Manning does. But um, there's some messaging sent behind the guys that are competing to be on our team in, in multiple roles. Um, it's also can be very much coincidence. So it's it's hard to pin down exactly why all the time. But um, today it's kind of fun to see these guys all pitch at home against the against the Yankees. Base hit by Aaron Hicks. And AJ, there are also some competition in the outfield. Yeah. With Carpenter and Badu. What do which what what do each one of these guys need to do uh, to to make this squad? Yeah, so it's interesting when you see when you talk about competition with guys, and I think a lot of times it's like, hey, Badu versus Carpenter, or um, you know, Kreidler versus Short versus Abanez in the infield. A um, couple injuries have opened up opportunities for guys, but it's really more about Badu versus Badu and Carpenter versus Carpenter and these guys against each other because we want the best version of them. We want them to contribute in the best way they can. They're different. Badu's going to be a little bit more active on the bases. Carp's going to hit the ball out of the ballpark a little bit more and be more of a threat against right-handed pitching. So I, you know, it, it, as much as it's about one guy versus another, it's, it's bringing the best version of yourself out and seeing where you can contribute. Because we can go a lot of different ways depending on the matchups that we see early in the season. So we've told the players, listen, control what you can. Go out there, be the best version of yourself. 
give us a hard decision to make, and, and a lot of these guys are doing that. How impressed were you with Parker Meadows, Austin's oh, little yeah. brother? Love him. I mean, I love the the, the, the vibe he had in camp. Um, I might like the homers more <laughs> if he can continue <laughs> to do that. But I, I think him, you know, he's another one uh, very similar to Colt Keith that this is his first big league camp. He's been in the minor leagues for a couple years. He's gotten a lot of notoriety, specifically last year. And he's got his big brother, albeit shorter little brother, um, a, a shorter brother in the in right field. And it's it's just been nice that these guys can come over and feel like they belong. And then when you contribute the way Parker did on both sides of the ball, it, it, it can move your timeline up a little bit to where he's an option earlier in the season. Line drive caught by Nick Maton. Good play by Maton, even better positioning by A.J. Hinch and his staff. Hey, uh, you know, it, we look at how many different guys are playing in different positions all the time for you. Maton's a really good example. How challenging is that for you, or do you kind of embrace that because you get an opportunity to, to manage almost a little more by doing something? Sure. No, I love moving the guys around, and, and we like multi-position guys, and, and we just got to make sure they get enough reps um, before the game, but also, you know, in game type situations. Like, there's only so much you can simulate. Now, Maton's been playing in the infield his whole life, so he will get a few outfield reps next week. Uh, we move Kreidler all around. I may even switch these guys in the fourth inning and have Maton play short and Kreidler play second um, just to get some game reps to see if we can, can do some things. Throw from Rogers and not in time. Aaron Hicks with a stolen bag on those big bases, A.J. I know as a player you wouldn't have liked those as a catcher. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know that they're safer out based on those bases, but they, um, I don't even notice them anymore, but I, I think you're keeping the first baseman away from um, where the where the batter runner is running and then, and then obviously in and around the base. We've gotten used to them where we don't even notice them. Your buddy Chris Fetters right next to you, the, the yeah. Michigan native, has a green hat on. How dif difficult is that for him, do you think? <laughs> well, you know who it's easy for? If you get a picture of Veerling, it's a TV game. So a lot of our guys that aren't playing still come out here. Yeah. scoobal has been out here. Nevin's out here. Veerling's out here. It's just like wearing the Irish in Notre Dame. So he's been pretty comfortable. I said that to him. He said, I feel like I'm back home. Yeah. You're always at home with the microphone. Thanks <laughs> for the time. We appreciate it. Take care. But AJ Hint is here on Valley Sports. His team up two as we head to the bottom of the third. Riley Green leads off the Tigers third. They're up two nothing. Our thanks to AJ Hinch for joining us. See AJ picking a little, poking at me a little bit, talking about the outfielders. We get hit on the elbow and we're out. Come on, AJ. Come on. Yeah, but he couldn't wipe the smile off his face when he saw you walk into his office for the first time <laughs> earlier this week. So that was always fun. He knows I'm a gamer. Ready to go. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll make sure we reiterate that to him as well. Green takes one in the dirt, and it's one and one. <laughs> the thing that amazes me about when you go into AJ Hinch's office, the the Excel spreadsheet that he has, and how far in advance he's already planned his team's preparation for games. Jam job off Green's leg makes it one and two. So he's he's all set for obviously tomorrow and, and Sunday as well. And then he knows he's back on TV with us here on Valley Sports on Monday and again on Wednesday. It's getting down toward the end. We mentioned it earlier about 13 days left in camp. So there are going to be some big and challenging decisions coming. There will be. Well, in the well thought out plan by H.A. Hinch. Green sends one to left and deep and is it fair it is fair that's a home run for Riley Green that's his third of the spring Tigers with a couple of solo jobs here in this one and they lead it three nothing well, that's one of the things that makes this young man special even with two strikes not afraid to let that ball get a little bit deeper think until the big part of the field gets pitched out over the plate that he can handle take a look at the pitch location here that ball's running away from him he knows he puts good barrel on it, and he knows talk to you got to talk to it sometimes, Shep. Stay fair, stay fair. That ball just gets right down the left field line for a homer. Left is bad at 99 miles an hour. Three nothing Tigers. Well, I love the, the reaction of listen, the players. Listen, the home runs are real, bud. I mean, you know that's that's 35 homers for Detroit this spring. That's second in the majors. Tough play at third base, and Maton Speed gets him an infield single. 
Yeah, you take a look at the Yankees' defense, and they're, they, they're shifted. And you can see that they're up the middle, thinking that Mayton's going to go up the middle, but he gets jammed, stays inside the baseball, puts the ball on the ground at third base, and with his speed, you can pretty much put that ball in your pocket. This is Andre Lipsius. He had the Tigers' first RBI in the first. Cole Keith had a solo homer in the second, and Riley Green led off this third inning with a solo home. Chef, I think we're still going to see teams shift and try to position their infielders in positions to be able to make plays or to take away hits. Not your traditional but shift, not obviously. Not your traditional That's, shift where you can well. just throw your third baseman in short right field. But I've also been thinking about some of the teams like the Tampa Bay Rays who's really good at positioning their players. Who, who would be the first team to move an outfielder to that position you would think Tampa I would think Tampa yeah yeah I think yeah. Tampa would be the team that go you know what he pulls all the time left-hander in the batter's box I'm gonna take my left fielder and I'm gonna put him in short right field now he's given up an opportunity obviously you have the hitter has the advantage now because if you hit a ball just a fly ball to the outfield instead of a single you're getting a double uh oh Lipsia sends one to deep left but hooking foul you saw the latest rules or among the rule changes for defenses at least two infielders on each side of second base until the pitch is released all four in front of the outer boundary no switching sides in the middle of an inning if you're going to switch you do it start of an inning and they stay there for the entire inning Lipsius got jammed sends it to center and if Alefa retires Andre Lipsius, that's the first out here in the third. Hey, join us tomorrow for the MHSA Girls Basketball Finals on Valley Sports Detroit, Valley Sports Extra, and the Valley Sports app. Four state champions will be crowned at the Resident Center in East Lansing. Game times and corresponding channels listed on your screen. Valley Sports Detroit is your home for the girls and boys basketball finals. Two semifinals taking place today before we can finalize everything. Badu turns on one. Sense it's a deep right field, and it's gone! Akil Badu goes yard, his second of the spring, and the Tigers have opened it up, flexing their muscles here in Lakeland. Just a little yabba-dabba, dude. Catching that ball on the inside. Getting that fastball on the inside part of the play. Something that he has struggled with, staying through the baseball. He said that he was getting there early, and coming out of the zone. So that means he was in and out of the zone. But take a look at this swing here. How he gets that hanging breaking ball right over the heart of the plate. And once he hits it, boom, catches it out front. He knows right away that ball is gone to right field. It's a good sign for him. Shep, getting pitches in the zone that he can drive. And the decision making on those pitches, not taking them not swinging through it, making good contact. And that was a really aggressive swing, but an under-controlled swing. This is Ryan Crichton. Tigers just tying the Phillies for most home runs in the Grapefruit League with 37. And, Shep, I get it. It's spring training. Everybody goes, well, it's just spring training. But the fact that they're driving the baseball out of the ballpark is a lot different than what we saw last year from this team. Lots of swings and misses, lots of chase. This year, these guys are flexing muscles and driving the ball out of the ballpark. And remember the Phillies last night, in case you missed it, they hit a few home runs. Matter of fact, four home runs overall in the blowout win over the Tigers. That's why they had a big lead. But the Tigers have three already here today. Clyde over the line drive right at the third baseman. Homer Defoe for the second out. Yeah, but you can go back to the dugout and feel good about that swing there. Yeah. Got a pitch you can handle. Barrel it up. Just happened to find a glove. All right, speaking of home runs, this is the guy who really kick started that home run barrage, Colt Keith. 427 foot home run in the second. Pops this one up. Left center. And a Diving catch made in left field and then dropped. Keith never stopped running. Pop up slide gets him to third. Aaron Hicks just couldn't haul it in. Well, you can see 
the shortstop here loops is Volpe. No, I'm sorry, Volpe. Yeah. Volpe for the Yankees. He didn't really get a good jump on this baseball. But I also know that down here in Florida, he's dealing with the sun, so he can't really see it. So he gets there, but you can see right there the communication. You can see Aaron Hicks saying, I got it, I got it. But watch Colton Keith here. He never breaks stride. He keeps running, running, and running. That's so important for players in general. But to see a young player pop one up, knows that he misses it, and hustles and gets himself to third base. It's just good baseball right there. Andrew Knapp is hitting for Jake Rogers in the number nine spot here. And he'll no doubt take over the catching duties as well. First at bat of the day for Knapp. Now behind the count one and two. Can't help but wonder if the Tigers may carry three catchers, knowing the versatility of Eric Haas. With Nap, Rogers, and Donnie Sands all vying for some opportunity on the roster. Nap puts a charge into one. Deep right center field. Still going, and that ball is out of here. Andrew Knapp with a big fly into the bullpen, and the Tigers continue to pound Domingo Herman for home runs. Yeah, again, Shep, that pitch to Knapp just caught a lot of it, a little bit too much plate. And these Tiger hitters are showing a lot of discipline, getting pitches over the over the plate, taking short, compact swings. A lot of backspin on that baseball there. Hits that ball out to right center field. Third home run of the inning. Fourth home run of the game for Detroit. Half of their hits have left the yard. They're up 7 nothing. I just really like the approaches. Guys going working down and through the baseball. Not seeing a lot of guys work up through the zone. Especially when you when we go to Comerica Park where you want to be able to hit line drives. Not a ballpark that's conducive to purely to launch angle. You want to focus on driving them balls in the gaps and utilizing that speed the Tigers have on their roster. Three and one to Austin Meadows. He's the eighth batter of the inning for Detroit. He has flied to center and struck out swing. <laughs> now it's full. Sharply passed a diving first baseman and Billy McKinney and into right field. A base hit for Austin Meadows. Nine hits for the Tigers already here on this Friday afternoon. And Aaron Boone looks like he's seen enough. He's going to go to his bullpen. And for good reason. It has been a rocky third for his starter, Domingo Herman. He has surrendered five runs, six hits, and three homers in this inning alone and departs down seven. If you're looking for the Tigers, they chase Domingo Herman after 61 pitches, light him up for nine hits, including four homers on the day. He gives way to Matt Crook, the lefty facing Jonathan Scope, the number nine hitter in the inning. Hitting second in the lineup, but the ninth batter of the inning. Takes a low strike, and it's one and one. And Shep, I truly believe this, guys. It was more about the you know, Tigers' approach against Herman. He made some quality pitches, but when he made mistakes over the middle of the plate, the Tigers were <laughs> putting in work, barreling him up. Now two and one to scope. Meadows at first five runs scored so far Detroit here 
in the third. Scope looks at strike two. It's two and two. Way outside, wind is picked up a little bit. Going right to left, a heavy gust. Wouldn't mind being in the batter's box right now. <laughs> <laughs> Get one up in the Get air. Get something up in the air. Meadows on the move, and Scope draws a walk. Riley Green started the inning with a solo home run to left that traveled 340 feet. That's for the second time in the frame. Yeah, just a really good piece of hitting by Riley Green. One, two count. There was no panic in that swing. Fastball running away from him, stays on it, covers that outside part of the plate. Green looks at strike one. I think the good news, the encouraging news for, for Tigers fans is they did it off a guy who's going to be in that starting rotation for New York because Green swings through it. Remember, he was suspended in 2020, was Herman, for violating the league's domestic abuse policy. 2019, he started 24 games, or he had 24 appearances, I should say, won 18 games. Generally has good stuff. That one's low and away to green, and it's one and two. Meadows at second, scope at first. A single got Meadows there, scope with a walk. Here's the one two. And Riley Green gets caught looking, but he helps the cause here in the third when the Tigers score five times, including three home runs. Green with his third of the spring. It traveled 340 feet. A few batters later, Akil Badu went yard, a two-run blast, and then it was Andrew Knapp with a two-run shot of his own. Tigers comfortably up 7-0 as you head to the fourth. Tigers fans. Seven run lead. He wants to work quickly, quickly two pitches to Wilmer Defoe to lead off the Yankees fourth. And it's one and one to Defoe, who is the third baseman in Aaron Boone's lineup here today. Tigers up seven with nine hits, including four home runs. That one a little high. We welcome in our good friend and our partner, Cam Maven, to the broadcast booth. Cam, your impressions early on, it's been an allowed first three innings for the Tigers bats out and just pounded Domingo Herman a guy that's going to be in that Yankee started rotation so you know guys out here competing for a spot that's what you want to see 2 2 from Manny on a line drive right at Cole Keith Damn, I was as much noise that was being made today. They might have needed some earplugs because that ball was jumping. I mean, listen, and it got started with Cole Keith. Cole Keith, and you know, I really like what he does at the plate. I love his 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 all-around ability to to work the whole field, take what you give him. But he's got some pop as well. He's he's a really good athlete. So I think you know, as he gets better defensively, that's a guy you could definitely see in a Tigers uniform and, and could definitely help put some wins on the board. Riley Green going the opposite way. I know home runs are always important, but really encouraging when you can take the ball where it's pitched and fight back when you're down in account. Well, well, you know, we make a lot of notes. We, we do a lot of reporting. And, and one note I made about Riley Green is he's a special type of hitter. And you saw that. I mean, that pitch was off the plate running away from him. So, you know, we played a lot of games here in, in our career, the SEMO, and to see him go oppo down the line and keep that ball fair, it, I mean, it speaks volumes on what type of player he really is. Kim, you're going you're to get a chance to see this kid, I mean, quite often. And it, it, each day, I mean, it seems like every day he does something special. He's a difference maker on this team and in this lineup. And he's only going to get better this year. You, know, you start thinking about some of the plays that I've seen him make in center field last year. I mean, Shep absolutely loves him, and, and, and rightfully so, because he can cover so much ground in center field. But now that you start thinking about Parker Meadows, you've got guys like Verlin on this team, speed guys, guys that can still play center. But he also has the ability to play left and right field as well. So where do you kind of see him fitting? Well, well right now, I think he's going to project as a really good 
future out corner outfielder. I think his athleticism just shines, uh, you know, so much. I think that's why you can put him so many different places. But you talk about the athleticism, and I think that's what AJ wants. You, you look at the Central Division, uh, Kansas City, Comerica, some ballparks where you're going to have to cover some ground. So, you know, shoring up your defense, catching the ball is huge. You know, those, that's the difference between winning those one-run ball games, uh, you know, late in the season too. So having the the flexibility with guys that can play defense and as well as adding some some contacts and popping and, and some more uh, you know consistency to the lineup yeah. I think it's going to be huge for these young guys and we know how good Cleveland was defensively a year ago so you know that's going to have to be a, a, a big priority for AJ Hinch and company he takes Matt Manning out with two outs here in the fourth Manning needed an outing to make himself and everybody else feel good you guys both said it looks like he got it yeah and I think what was you know huge for Matt today it, it was getting through that that little bit of traffic. You know, I think we all want to see him come out and have smooth innings and dominate. But I want to see how you respond when when things kind of get tight, or when the wheels start to look like they're going to fall off. But he did a really good job bouncing back, making some good pitches when he got us in trouble. And that's why I want to see that adversity. And, and that those are the things that are going to put Matt Manning over the top, I think, for A.J. Hinch and his staff. Don't you feel like he kind of slowed the heartbeat down? Because that game, it could have sped up on him, given that he hasn't pitched well this season, this spring training. That was a situation where, where the Yankees really could have capitalized, but he slowed himself down, gathered himself, and he goes, I just got to execute pitches, and I got to throw every pitch with conviction. And I thought we saw that when he had some traffic on the bases. Yeah, I thought he did a really good job. He, he fell behind at one point, and you saw him take a step. You know, we had this new clock, and one thing we, we get preached to as players is slow the game down to you. So it's a little bit of a, a, a weird feeling right now trying to speed up, slow down. But like you said, he did a great job checking his pulse, slowing his heart rate down, and, and finding a way to get some big outs. And I think that's going to be huge for his confidence moving forward. Yeah, yeah it's a big outing. Big outing for many. Yeah, as you guys mentioned, it was an important one. It'll be important for others uh, later on uh, as we see Joey Wentz and Alex Fiedo do a little bit later on. But here, the, to finish off the inning, A.J. Hinch decides to go to Edwin Basita. Basita wearing 65, which used to be Gregory Soto's number. Here's the Wallside Windows pitching change numbers on Osita last year in Arizona. Acquired off waivers from the D-backs. Live arm. That one at 93 missed low and away. Originally a Dodgers free agent signing in 2016. Really is a great story. Osita among the many great stories in Tigers camp. Delivers, delivers it. Another one low and away. During his early teen years, Oseda worked at a gas station, and in exchange for pay, he asked the owner to pay for his schooling. So he worked seven hours a day, got it done. Duran gets it done with a single to left. It's a two-out knock for the Yankees here in the fourth. That is a great story, you know, to see somebody persevere through things like that, and to also have people around you to will, willing to help you out and, and kind of fulfill your dreams. And, you know, Anytime you get an opportunity, I think it's, uh, you know, it speaks a lot about character when you get stories like that. I think those are the guys you want around your, your clubhouse, and those are the kind of teammates you want around. Yeah. He'll face Jake Bowers now with a man aboard and two away. Up high. Shep, you talked about his arm. He's got a live arm. He's 93, 94, 95 with his fastball. But I just like the arm angle here, too. This is a different arm angle. A little side arm there, a little three-quarter, little drop down. So that makes that slider so much more effective for, especially against a right-handed hitter, because the ball starts behind you. Meadows off the fly ball, no problem. And the Yankees strand a two-out single. Seven-nothing Detroit. It might be cold outside, but there's... Might be cold. World Base Bundle. Get an exclusive limited edition Miggy bobblehead plus three games for as low as $49. Go to tigers.com slash classic to secure your piece of history today. With Craig Monroe, Cam Maven, I'm Matt Shepard. Welcome to Lakeland. Nick Maton stands in to lead off the Tigers fourth. Maton hit by a pitch in the first, an infield single and rode home on a kill Badu's two-run homer to right in the third. Jumps on one, sends it high in the air. Right field. Floriel is there, and there's one away. Congrats to Tom Izzo and the Spartans of Michigan State. They advanced to at least one more game after beating USC by 10. 
And for those of you rooting on the Spartans on this St. Patrick's Day, we welcome you to spring training baseball here on Valley Sports. Tigers exploding for five runs in the third. They've hit four home runs so far today. The first run came home on Andre Lipsius's RBI single back in the first. Home runs from Colt Keith, Riley Green, Akil Badu, and Andrew Knapp have powered them to the 7 0 lead. On the inside edge to even it up against Andre Lipsius. That's a good looking scoreboard. So far. Nine hits for Detroit as Lipsius swings through it. They chased Domingo Herman after two and two thirds. Matt Crook came on. And he stays out there here in the fourth. Ground ball left side. Routine for Defoe. Two away. Let's take a look at Akil Badu's last at bat here. One of the things they scuffled with is staying through the baseball. Well, he got himself a little hanging breaking ball there. Didn't do much on the inner half, and he didn't pull off of it. Got the bat, hair, bat head to it. He drives that ball out to right field. It's just a good piece of hitting. Something that... Really, we want to see from a kill, but do we really want to see him continue to make good, solid contact? You want him to be a contact guy, Cam, if you ask me, because he can do so many things on a diamond that can help you win a ball game. Let's talk about the speed there, how he can impact uh, this Tigers lineup. Yeah, he's the type of guy that they say he, he can tilt the field. He's yeah. out there with his, his speed and athleticism. And, and one thing I like about that swing is it's a little bit a little bit looser. Look, look a little bit more fluid right there, right? Opposed to last year, like he was fighting his body a little bit. But you see uh, the looseness in that swing right there. Like you said, direction, great, behind the ball, stiff front side. So this is a guy who he can do so much if he's able to get back to that guy that we saw break into the league. Yeah, you get back to those 2021 20, numbers and you have a different team to a certain extent plus the speed on the base paths as you guys were alluding to earlier and what I look for when I go in the clubhouse is you know to see the, the energy you want to you know check the temperature and, and I like where his head is right now you know a kill is, is in there ready to compete excited about this opportunity to win that fourth outfield spot uh, and he's looking for a bounce back season. And that's what you want guys that are hungry and, and out to compete right now. It was impossible breaking up a kill, but do Cam Maven and Craig Monroe talking earlier today. It's just impossible. <laughs> Trying to get a word in edgewise, guys. We've, we've got a we've got a meeting here. Oh no. Okay, continue. That, that was, was my great. fault. It was great. Oh, it was great. I, I loved every second. It was like of being back home, Chef. So <laughs> it was like a reunion today when I came in, and, and I had a lot of these young guys. You know, yeah. I feel like I raised some of these guys as far as you know, trying to help them become professionals. Good take by Badu to make it three and two. You know, one of the things I noticed about Achilles, it's his body. I thought last year he was bulky big, where he was kind of robotic. with you, that's why. Well, that's <laughs> the he's not hanging out with me. <laughs> but he was just a little bit too big for me, especially in the chest area. Now it looks like he's slimmed down a lot. Still yoked. There's no question. He still has yeah. got a great physique. But you can just tell that the swing is looser. You know, you can tell it's freer. You know, he's a little bit more loose and through the baseball. I think this is going to be huge for him. Yeah, I, I really do. And one thing that he does well, Simo, you talk about, you know, making more contact. He will walk, and I think that's huge. So if he can get that, you know, uh, consistency back as far as making co co uh, con consistent quality, you know, knowing what he wants to attack in the zone, he's going to get on base. So I think that just adds to, to what he really brings to the table. And that was a good plate appearance right there. Absolutely. Right? Lefty on lefty. Those are that bats in spring where A.J. Hinch, uh, George Lombard, those are that bats they're looking at. We know, you know, how he's going to fare against righties, but it's those at bats against those lefty lefties that are going to really dictate, you know, where he falls into place. Well, it's going to make a difference in if he's going to play against lefties or if he's going to be sitting on the bench against left-handed hitters. If he's able to hit lefties, there's no question his back can play and he can be an impact player. But if he's going to continue, if he struggles against left-handers, you open up the door for A.J. Hinch to go to a right-handed hitter. Uh, that gives him a better chance to have success. This is Ryan Kreidler. Boy, Ryan Kreidler was very complimentary oh, to my, my, my two teammates earlier today. He said, Cam Maven, when he first came up, Cam Maven treated me like a big leaguer, not like a minor leaguer. And then he said, and anytime I'm around Craig Monroe, I leave with a smile on my face. I mean, it's just, 
it's really fun to hear those types of stories, especially from Kreider, who works so hard, takes one low. They all work hard, everybody. You know, you don't get to this level without working hard, but all his teammates have talked about his work ethic, and especially in the gym, getting after it. I mean, tons of potential when you talk about Ryan Kreider. From the moment I met him, like I said, I said it, you know, I just, it's all about finding a consistency at the play. If he hits, he's going to find his way in this lineup because defensively he is special, uh, uh, and, I, and I really like what he does, you know, as a player. He, he's really grown, I and mean, he's had a good spring this spring. So, you know, you want to start off right, and, and spring is where you get it, get it started. Okay, when you were in spring training, did you ever really worry about the numbers, or did you worry about your plate appearances and how you were in control? Long throw just to get Kreidler by a step. We'll continue that part of the conversation when we come back. We played four here in Lakeland. The Tigers up by, what do you say, fellas? A touchdown and an extra point? <laughs> Plus to Stan's credit. Hurry, though, because prices increase tonight at 11.59 p.m. Don't wait. Run or walk your way to fun at Comerica Park on Saturday, May 6th. The I ran the D5K to register, visit runsignup.com slash I ran the D or scan the QR code. Anthony Volpe leads off the New York fifth. And a new Tigers pitcher is into the ball game. It's Joey Wentz. It's a wall side windows pitching change. This guy, I, I think you both like what he can bring to the table when he's right. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Joey Wentz. I mean, the guy kind of reminds me of a, a, a young Cliff Lee. You remember yeah, Cliff Lee, yeah. big Cliff arm, Lee him. coming straight at you. Really controls the glove side part of the dish extremely well for a big lefty, and I think that's important when you're facing righties. And I think as he continues to progress with his all-speed pitches, especially his cutter, uh, sometimes it plays like a slider. I think that could be really, really big as far as opening up the dish. But as he learns to continue to pitch at different quadrants, I think this guy could be special. And just my opinion, I think he's top five one of the best pitchers in this organization right now right, right now wow. and he still has some room to grow mm -hmm. because secondary pitches has continued needs to be a, a plus pitch for him and I think that's what he's working on uh, this spring training is trying to utilize those pitches more often it's interesting because Doug Bockler who is the pitching coach for AAA Toledo had him a year ago or, or so and said who are the comps? And he said Cole Hamels. Cole Hamels. That's another go. Another yeah. go honestly, that's a great comp when you really look at his body. Thinking back, facing Cole all his ears, very, very similar stature. I think that he, that's even a better comp. I think you're making a great point, though, Kim. And to your point of being able, left-handers being able to pitch aggressively on the inside. And the reason he's able to do it, you take a look at how he ties the baseball. Mm -hmm. And it just seems like when you hide the baseball and then all of a sudden they get to that release point, that ball gets on you quicker for, as a right-handed hitter. And so when you have a pitcher like Wentz that's able to utilize that inside part of the plate by speeding you up, that's when he's going to get you out with that curved ball and that change of fading down in the way. And you see it right here in this at bat, very good bat so far from, for Anthony Volpe, but he's not been able to get to that pitch inside. Yeah. So. And that talks about his stuff and his ability to get in there. And it, what it does is opens up that back foot slider, that back foot cutter, and it also opens up the outer half as well. And you see him get a lot of takes on that back foot pitch. There it is right there, back foot, back foot cutter as we speak. Job well done right on cue. So this is great, at, great sequence right here. And we, we talked about Joey Wentz being able to control the inner half. And right there, he gets that out because he shows Volpe in, in, in hard with the heater. And then right there, that nasty cutter. And that's a pitch that I think, as he uses, uh, understands how to use that inside and out, I think this guy can be so effective. And pitching up with the fastball as well. He does a really good job pitching to that, that trap. Uh, that trap part of the area we call it. It looks good, but nothing you can really do to it. So I think as he learns that, you know, I think he's going to be great. The cutter is what he learned from Bockler. When Bockler asked him about that comp being Hamels, he said, you know, remember this, Cole Hamels throws a lot of cutters. How would you feel about that? Joey Wentz said, that would be sick. I'd love to learn how to throw the cutter. <laughs> and for the most part, it's been effective. Let one get away there and hit was Waldo Perez or Peraza. And you see right here, curveball. Just trying to do too much and you see him, you know, he gets Volpe that bat before and I think he might be trying to work on that You see him. I think he's trying to go back foot C mode, but just got away from him. but this is the time where you work on those things Those are his numbers entering today's outing I mean, you just look shabby. at the case. There's 11 strikeouts only three walks. I mean you love that especially with a new clock 
you know, a guy that pounds the zone like that, that keeps the defense on their toes as well and allows guys to be ready to make plays. Really did a nice job a year ago. His last five starts, the ERA was at 1.73 in his last five starts with the Tigers. And I think that's important. I think when you go back and watch, you see a lot of fastballs and a lot of, you know, cutters. So I think it it's, says a lot now. You look at Tampa Bay and some of these organizations that get guys from other, other organizations and they change them and all of a sudden they take off. Well, they understand, let's, let's pitch to your bread and butter, and I think those two pitches is his bread and butter. So as he continues to figure out, is it the changeup, is it the breaking ball, that's next. I think that's where he's going to really start to be even more effective than he was last season. Aaron Hicks standing in against Wentz, who starts him off with a 93-mile-an-hour on the outside part of the play, 0-1. Yeah, but I think he does next in job of establishing that fastball. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, you know, you, you got to pitch off your fastball, and he's not afraid to throw that fastball in any count, in any zone. Missed inside. And then there's no question as a hitter, you're speeding up. You're trying to get that bat head to the baseball, and then that's why that cutter is going to be effective. I, I think the curveball, I, I like the curveball because I like the mix, Cam, of him going fastballs up in the strike zone. But then from that same arm angle, being able to throw that breaking ball off that fastball and change your eye level and work the bottom of the zone. Yeah, I think yeah. that's a plus plus pitch for him if he can con be consistent throwing that curveball. And, and what makes his curveball special is it doesn't pop. He does a really good job of staying on top of it. So it gives that deception of a, a heater out of your hand and then, and then the bottom falls out and disappears. Low and inside is three and one to Aaron Hicks who has singled twice. It's nice to see Aaron Hicks healthy, playing. I know with spring training, I know that's one of the things that he's really focused on this year, is to make sure he keeps himself on the field. Inside, down goes Hicks. And it's a second consecutive man aboard for New York. First by hit by a pitch, and now Hicks draws the walk. I don't know if Hicks liked that, Cam. I mean, it's a 3-1 cutter. Well, you know, when he goes back and, and watches the video, he's going to realize that this pitch isn't really close to him. But, you know, hey, listen. Aaron, he's staring at him. He's playing with a chip on his shoulder right now. I think after last year, you know, we can say it, it was pretty much a job demotion. Lost his job last year. And I think he's a guy like, you see it, he's playing with a little chip. He's playing, <laughs> he's playing with a little extra, little extra umph behind his, his game right now. So... You know, you, you, I guess you like that if you're the Yankees. A floater to right. Isaiah Kiner Falefa loads him up thanks to the single to right field. There's only one away, and for the second time today, the Yankees have the bases loaded. We mentioned the success Wentz had toward the end of last year. This is what he used to reach that success seven starts overall and 11 starts in Toledo and see for me Kim I look at that bottom number when I talked about the curveball when he threw it it was hitters one for ten absolutely it's an effective and, and, pitch and that's why we said I think him finding out which is his, his most uh, his third most dominant pitch is going to be huge and then you can figure out what you want to do with the changeup but you're right the numbers don't lie one for ten I mean that speaks volumes Facing Esteban Floreal and starts him off with a strike at 93 miles an hour 0-1. Well, we saw Matt Manning get himself into trouble in that second inning with the bases loaded. And he was able to slow the heart beat down and execute pitches. Like to see the same here from Joey Wentz. Keeps his foot on the gas pedal, but also hit spots. You don't want to give in to the hitter here. And these are those moments, Simo, where you want to see. You know where a guy is at this point in spring runners out there on the bases you, you know a little little bit of damage control you want to see you know what type of stuff joey wentz really has in these situations these are huge growing moments the one one is swung on and missed i think one of the things that i really look for in this in these situations from pitchers is do guys give in do they give in to the hitter and they just make mistakes over the plate or are they still confident enough to still be able to work the edges to work the, the corners uh, to get themselves out of these jams there's the one two ground ball through the hole on the right side 
Overplayed by Meadows. Couple runs score. They got somebody caught. Yep, they got him caught. Floriel just walks his way. Kreidler will throw to second. They'll tag him out. Floriel got a little too aggressive, rounding second base. But he does plate two, and the Yankees are on the board. Floriel, Floriel got a little bit excited right there. Got a pitch he can get to. Ball in the inner half. He pulls the hands in and gets the barrel to it. And you look at Austin Meadows here in right, in right field. Just didn't get the glove down to keep that ball in front of him. Gives up a cup run, but to take a look at Floreal here. He's just excited about it. He takes a peek. He sees that Meadows has missed the baseball, but he didn't pick up the runner in front of him, Cam, and that's so important. You got to run with your head on the swivel, and you got to watch that guy in front of you, and he did not at all. Spring training lows right there for you. <laughs> <laughs> or spring training don'ts. Exactly. How about that? Exactly. Wentz battles Wilmer Defoe here. It's 0 and 2. And that's that pitch right there, that fastball at the top of the zone that really just jumps out of his hand. You watch Joey Wentz. He stays behind the ball so well, gets that really good backspin, that really good late carry. Fouled away. Wentz made his major league debut against Oakland a year ago in May. A struggle, but his first win case of September 9th at Kansas City, and that was special since that was the team he rooted for growing up as a kid in Kansas. Another row two, just missed. And even though that pitch missed, it does so much as far as opening up the outer half. Because now you're cheating if you're a right-handed hitter. Now that hip is a little, a little bit quick. You're a little bit antsy, anticipating them coming in. The one-two is swung on and missed. And Joey Wentz boasts a couple of strikeouts in the inning, but the Yankees boast a couple of runs in the frame. It's now 7-2. Tigers, this break is brought to you by Mary Grove Awnings, home of Michigan's best made shape. Play. I think it's going to be the same for, for both teams. So uh, we just got to get the little adjustment to, to the clock, which is, the, the I think, the hardest one to to be, but I think, you know, we're going to get used to it. With the shift, I have no problem with that because I came up, we wasn't shifting a lot. I think when I got called up, it wasn't shifting a lot. So just got to get used with the with the playing in the dark or something, you know, the lean things. But I think I'm ready for it. I'm ready for shift, no shift. No, I'm, I'm, I'm good with it. So this baseball, you just got to catch the ball and throw him out. You know, you got to get to the ball and throw him out. So it's the same baseball, but different. So it's going to be the same. This go makes it sound easy. That's not always easy. We've moved to the bottom of the fifth. Justin Henry Malloy leads off for the Tigers. He's batting the spot vacated by Colt Keith, who went two for two with a couple of runs scored. This kid is going to be a good one. Came over in the trade from Atlanta for Joe Jimenez. He's got a really good arm. He's a heck of an athlete. And an even better young man. We're dropping cops today, right? <laughs> we are dropping cops. Yeah. Go. Tim Beckham a little Tim bit. Tim Beckham a little, yeah. Young Tim Beckham. Good hands, short swing. I, I really, really have enjoyed watching this young man progress. And I think, you know, losing Joe, Tigers fans love him, but I think they really got a good one back in Justin Henry Malloy. Yeah, I definitely believe. Kim, he can be an impact player. He's got some power in that bat. Makes good contact. And he can he got some versatility on the defensive side as well. He can play some outfield. I know the Tigers have looked at him at third base. He's a guy that you know just can go back to the minor leagues, polish up some things. But he's definitely a name that you, you want to remember because I think we're going to see him in the Tigers uniform sooner rather than later. Has to get innings at third base because he was originally a third baseman when Atlanta signed Austin Riley to the long-term deal. They moved him to the outfield. Now his feet are back in the dirt. 
takes it low in the dirt, three and two. And Cam, you know this. You hit, they'll find a place for oh, you. Oh, man. <laughs> and if you're an athlete, and he, yeah. he is a good athlete, so you're absolutely right. There's the payoff to him. In the air, but foul. Cam, let me ask you this. Uh, you know, a lot of times we, we, you know, you're being judged in spring training. And so many times, you know, you look at the numbers. Well, guy's hitting 300, and he's got five home runs, and, he, you know. Does that always tell the tale, though? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. You know, early in my career when I was young, out of high school, you don't know any better. Nobody's trying to coach you or, or tell you to do this and do that. And, and I played great in spring, but I, as you progress and kind of get into your career, you have people start to kind of nitpick or try this or try that. And, you know, after the first few years, I struggled in spring training a lot. And, and, and not, not until about 2014, when I went and played winter ball, I came back and had the best spring maybe of my career. And I realized, okay, that's why so many of our, our Spanish teammates, you know, have such good spring trainings, because you play winter ball the whole yeah. time. So I went and played winter ball in December, and I came back in spring training ready to go pitch one. And I can see the difference. I can see why those guys are so ready. So for me, uh, my whole outlook on spring training was, hey, make sure by that first week of April, when that red dot comes on, hey, you're going to get the real Cameron Maven. And, and you know, like I know, see, you see a lot of spring training in Hall of Famers as yes. well. Uh, <laughs> guys come out, hit seven, eight homers, lead the league and everything. And then when the season starts, they, they go, they, they disappear. They well, you're talking about when the lights come on. When the lights come oh, on. Oh, when that, it's for real. That okay. real little red <laughs> dot comes on, we used to say, <laughs> guys start, you know, disappearing. So for me, it doesn't tell a tale. Do you want to have a great spring? Of course. But if you had to choose one, is it a great spring? Is it a great spring or a great season? You give me a great season. Great season. I think I was one of those guys too. I struggled a little bit during spring training, and it wasn't. Be and I think I struggled because of the numbers. I, my numbers weren't there. Yes. But I had good at bats. I felt like I was in control of my at bats. You know, and a lot of times as a veteran player, you can just take on the responsibility of saying, you know, I'm just going to work on Absolutely. driving the ball the opposite way. So you might find a guy veteran guy taking those pitches on the inside part of the plate that he can handle Absolutely. that I can get to but I'm, I'm, I'm trying to better myself for the season because I know I'm gonna hit a heavy dose of sliders down and away I'm gonna get fastballs away up and away and so I think it's so different for a veteran player Absolutely. when he comes to spring training opposed to a younger player you got trying to make it trying to make, make a team impression. you know you have that luxury when you have a guarantee Ooh. Andrew now Ooh. bidding for a second home run with an exclamation point Two bombs Ooh. from Andrew Knapp today. I mean, let's assume, right, Jake probably left the game a little early. Yeah, a little bit. Knapp, you got to get going and stretch out a little quick. Man, have yourself a day, Andrew Knapp. They talk about the depth at, at, at catcher position, and they have it. I mean, Eric Haas, Rodgers, and now you see Knapp saying, hey, don't forget about me at all. Kim, look at this swing here. Oof, that ball's on the inner half, and it was short, compact. And that ball's still going. They say when it's closer to you, you got to go out and get it. And he went out and got it. That's a beautiful swing. And I love when they let you know early, grab the barrel, <laughs> you know, nice little flip. Act like you've been there before. Griffey yeah. says, let the kids play. Let the kids play. They're playing. See, Tim Anderson, we said we need the bat flips back. That's what, you know, ask Mark DeRosa, <laughs> can we get the bat flips back? And I like it. Let the kids All you got to do is it's a young the, man's game now. Watch the World Baseball Classic, and you'll see those bat <laughs> yeah. flips. It's great, man. They're having a blast. Meadows grounds one to second. So Knapp homers from the left side and now from the right side. He can do it from both sides of the plate. And look at that ball right over the middle. It's screaming hit me. And you can hear it. You, you heard that ball echo in this stadium at Joker marching. I mean, off the bat, he knew, the pitcher knew, and he gave the fans something to go home with. I love that. Left the bat at 106 miles an hour. Impressive. Here's Jonathan Scope. He's trying to do the same. Tapped it foul. And you've seen it, I think, the past few seasons. We've seen some offensive regression. And, and right there in that swing, he just, Scope just looks a little disconnected, Simo. He, he does. Just, swing looks a little bit long. I know people talk about hands, but it's a little too handsy. I think he needs to rely on his body a little bit more, shorten up. Because I think if this guy can get back to, to what he was two years ago, I mean, you see last year still in the mix of, of gold glove talk, and so he still plays a, a very quality second base. But if they can get Jonathan Scope back to just half of what he was two years ago, I think the Tigers could really be competitive and really make some noise in the central. 
Scope reaches out. That's going to drop. Left center field. Hits the bag. Wants more. On his way. And it's a stand-up two-out double. And Kevin, exactly to your point here, when you start talking about the disconnects, right? This swing here, you can tell that he was more content, con more connected. The timing and the rhythm. Take a look at the rhythm here in the hands, how they get back, front foot gets down. This allows you to see the baseball, and that ball's down, but you, I love the fact that he was being athletic, hitting athletic, getting going down and getting that baseball and driving it in the left center field gap. Roberto Campos will run for Jonathan Scope at second base. Here's Jonathan Davis with his first at bat of the day. And he takes strike one, batting for Riley Green. Met Jonathan Davis yesterday in the first first encounter. I just told maybe I, I, I know exactly who you are. I seen the play that you made in center field in Milwaukee. And I almost like you were going to break your neck. He goes, his wife told him not to do that anymore. <laughs> and it, got home said, honey, great, you, you, great play. Great play, but honey. We love you. We, stop. We want you here. And he, I love his response too, Shep. His response was, somebody's got to pay the bills, right? <laughs> oh, I love it. He was great after the game last night, signing a ton of autographs. And taking pictures. He looks at strike three there, but the Tigers add yet another. Andrew Knapp with his second homer of the day. Tigers now lead at 8-2. Simo talked to players. Cam Maven stays in the booth on Valley Sports. Tigers baseball on Valley Sports is brought to you by your local Toyota dealer. Visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. And by Figer Law. One goal, one mindset. Justice for you. What a great day here on St. Patrick's Day in Lakeland. Cam Maven, Craig Monroe, and our entire Tigers Valley Sports crew. I'm Matt Shepard. Glad you're with us on this Friday afternoon. Hope you got big plans for the weekend. Tigers up 8-2. Joey Wentz with his second inning here, Cam. And Joey Wentz gave up the two runs in the fifth. Found his control a little bit. He gets a ground ball up the middle. Good range by Kreidler. On a bounce. And a nice dig by Lipsius. Talk about Kreilich, talk about his hard work and, and, and him, you know, putting in so much work offensively. But this is what I've always enjoyed about him. Even when he came up as a young guy, he always could play defense, showing off the range. And then his IQ to give a nice, good, long hop, make it easy on the first baseman. So you love what you're seeing out of Ryan Kreilich this, Kreilich this, uh, this spring training. He, he is really showing that, hey, is there a spot for me because I can help this team win ball games? I'm glad you brought up the IQ part because he got rid of it so quickly knowing the speed of the runner, knowing how far he had to range to his left. That's all part of the baseball acumen as this one goes down the right field line foul on its own two to Rodolfo Duran. And as you look at injuries to guys like Nevin, these innings are important for Kreider to go out there and show, hey, I can be one of those guys to, to give you meaningful innings defensively and offensively as well. Trying to give Scott Harris and A.J. Hinch something to think about. One and two to Rodolfo Duran, who has struck out and singled for New York today. Popped up, foul ground. Lipsy is giving chase with room. And they're two away. Lipsius remains in the game at first, but some defensive changes. Justin Henry Malloy at third base. Jermaine Palacios at second base. Parker Meadows takes over for his brother in right. And you saw Jonathan Davis in center field. Two away for Jake Bowers, the number nine hitter, who's 0 for 2. A smooth delivery from Joey Wentz. Gets him way out in front, 0 and 1. And there's that big, nice breaking ball that Simo spoke about that he really loved. Hitters one for ten last year on that pitch. Seeing him use it a lot more to get out of trouble and to start this inning. It's a check swing to third. Henry Malloy on a bare hand. Not in time to get a speedy Jake Bowers. Man aboard with two away for New York. 
And those are the ones that, you know, you try to save during the season, Shep. You get those <laughs> swinging bunts, and right. you're going back to the dugout, and guys are telling you, hey, you want to save those, man. It's a long season. <laughs> but I'm sure it feels good to Jake Bowers nonetheless. Turns the lineup over to Anthony Volpe. A good looking prospect for New York, isn't he? And he has a presence about himself. I, I've watched him all spring as well, and just following out the whole league and talking to guys on the field today from the Yankee staff. And Aaron Boone raved about him. He talks about his athleticism, his IQ, uh, and, and his leadership as a young guy to not even really be implemented into that clubhouse the way that he leads. And, and a guy that's extremely impressed with him is the captain. So, you know, when you when they talk about you in that sense, I think it says a lot to. The scouting and what they what they see in Anthony Volpe, he has really had a really, really impressive spring so far. Can he make this New York squad that won 99 games a year ago and has finished above 500 in each of the past 30 seasons? 30 consecutive winning campaigns. That's impressive. Popped up right side should reach the seats and it does follow ground. I would guess the Yankees are the favorite in the American League East going into 2023. I think you have to look at the Yankees and then the Blue Jays, what they continue to do as a young group. Baltimore Orioles had a very impressive season last year. Brian, Brandon Hyde down there turning those guys around. So the East is always going to be formidable and, and tough and, and competitive each and every night. Led the majors and homers a year ago, did this New York squad. 1 2. Volpe puts it in the air. Parker Meadows behind it. He's got it. And a good inning for Joey Wentz. He's through. He and the Tigers are through five and a half. Tigers fans, don't miss this. The six, the new Yankees pitcher. It's Davey Garcia. The right-hander set to face Jermaine Palacios and Andre Lipsius to start this sixth inning. Those were his numbers in the minors a year ago. Soon, Greg Monroe will talk with Jonathan Scope. Now let's go under the awning with Greg Monroe and Jonathan Scope, courtesy of Mary Grove Awning. Chef, thank you here. I'm down here with Jonathan Scope. Jonathan Scope got a chance to play in the WBC. Tell me, tell me about that experience. How was that for you? It's a nice experience. You know, I've been doing this for. Um, 2013, I went in 2017. Always good experience to play with your guys that you've grown up with and represent your country. And you go over there and have fun and play the game the right way and, and trying to win. And it was really good to play with um, Sandra Bogart, Didi Gregorius, Jurisson Brofar, Simmons, and Valentin. All those guys that's there, you know, that I didn't mention their name. So it's, it's fun to go out there and, and play with them. And I play with my brother too on the same team, so it's fun. Well, we're glad to have you back here in the Tigers uniform getting ready for spring training. I must admit, you look great. Looked like you dropped some pounds. I think the people at home would love to know what did you do in the off season? Did you, was it diet? Did you work out more cardio? Yeah. Enlighten us a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I, I do a lot of crossfit. I was doing a lot of crossfit and more cardio. And uh, eating wise, I like to eat a lot. You know what I mean. So I was working out harder. You know, so I eat less a little bit. But I was doing crossfit. This, this, this is, is a lot. You know, it's a lot. So in the first, in the beginning, you want to quit. But as soon as you you, you got it into you, it's, it's 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 good. It's really good to do. You know, and but under control. Let me ask you this too. How important is it going to be for you to have some versatility and be able to play some second base, play some first base, and also possibly playing a lot of third base. Are you ready and embracing that challenge? Yeah, of course, I'm ready. Always good. All, always the challenge is good. You know, I, mean, I, I show everybody I can play second base and a high level. So if they if you can move around and play second, play third, and play first, you know, I'm, I'm ready to do it. I'm, I'm willing to, to do it, and I'm ready to show everybody what I can do. You know, I think, you know, I'm a really good second baseman, but I'm a really good third baseman too. So they just put me in there, write my name in the lineup, and I'm, I'm going to go out there and do the job. Tell me about the clubhouse. I feel like the guys, there's a better, there's a togetherness and good camaraderie. Do you sense that when you came back from the WBC? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I sense it a lot. You know, as soon as I walk in, you know, all those guys say, hey, welcome back. You know, we doing this, we doing like, we all, they're all together. You know, they want to, they, they, they make me feel, oh, I miss out. You know, I miss them and they miss me. So like, they welcome me. Hey, we doing this, we eating, we doing this, you know. I was like, oh, it's, 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 it's this, you know. And they make me feel like everybody's together, more together, and everybody cheer for each other. You know, it's, it's really good feelings. 
Okay, let's talk about this swing. You know, you had a tough season last year, not the kind of season that Jonathan Scope's accustomed to having. What adjustment did you make this offseason that's going to allow you to get back to the scope that we all love? Um, you know, like, I, I make some adjustments, trying to stay more more inside the ball and trying to be balanced and trying to swing and, and better pitches, you know, like like you say. It's not the perfect season that I have, you know, but you learn from it. I think, like, you play a lot, too. You know, you know how it is. You know, sometimes the season is not go your way, but those season it mean a lot because you're going to take it away and learn from it and, and take Take it to the next season and get better. But, you know, I, I think I'm better. You know, I'm better already. So it's gonna have a. We, we're gonna. We all together gonna have a good season. And I know for a fact that I'm gonna have a really, really good season. Well, for me, I think you know when you have the struggles on the offensive side, but you're you know talked about in the Gold Glove, your finalist says a lot about your character. Have you always had that ability to be able to? You know, split the two in half. There's a hitting side, and then there's also the defensive side, and the defense did not lack at all. Yeah, you know, like you gotta split. They, uh, I got call up, and they t they tell me right away, not call up in the minor league. You gotta split. You gotta you gotta be a hitters. After a year, you gotta run base running, and then you gotta defense. And sometimes, you know, sometimes all, all, all the time, you gotta have a you gotta be a good leader and a good. Um, teammate in, in, in the dugout so it's, it's four things to do you know what I mean so if you're not hitting you better run the base good you better catch the ball you know something some something you can control is run hard and trying to play good defense you know hitting is hard you know it's hard. you hit the ball hard sometimes it's out but defense you can go out there and control it and catch the ball and throw it and play hard and run hard all the time so you know to I didn't hit much last year but the defense didn't lack, so it's uh, so I, 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 I put it away and go out there and, and make a place for for my teammates well, Shep, guys, we're down here hanging out with, with Scopey. Listen, he looks good. He's got a little bit more facial hair here. He's going to show a little bit of the facial hair. He said he's got no more. We don't have any up top, so we got to have it on our face. So, Scope, man, I appreciate your time, man. Good luck to you this season. Uh, obviously, much success, and we, and we feel like, yeah, you, you, you have the attitude. You have the right attitude ready to bounce back and, and then be a, a, a big piece of what this Tiger team is going to be able to do uh, this season. So thank you, brother. Thank you, bro. uh -huh. All right, Chef, back up to you and Cam. Really good stuff with uh, Jonathan Scope. What, what, a, what a travel schedule he had to and from the World Baseball Classic where he took a flight from Tampa to Los Angeles to Taiwan, which was 14 and a half hours, by the way. And then he had an hour and a half drive. On his way back, he left out of Korea to Atlanta, then to Tampa. And talking to him yesterday, did not know the day or the time. And I don't blame him one bit. Tough to catch up on your sleep patterns. You saw the one for three where he walked and he doubled. He might be more proud of the walk than the double can. <laughs> yeah, you know, a guy who is definitely hard to walk. But I love what he was saying, too, especially when you come in to the clubhouse today and there's a good mix of, of, of young guys, but also some veteran leadership in there as well. And, and as a veteran guy, you want to hear Jonathan Scope say the things that he said. I'm willing to embrace whatever the, the, the situation, the position is that, that A.J. wants me in. And, you know, I just want to be penciling the lineup. And, and as you're trying to develop and create a culture, uh, you know, if you're a new regime and, and Scott Harris, those are the kind of things that you want to hear your veteran guys talk about and say. Well, those are the things right there that Akil Badu brings to this team right here. Hits it softly to the left side. They had him pushed a little bit closer toward the middle of the field, and all he did was use his speed. Got a little contact. He's got himself another knock, his second of the day, and he's on base for three times. Yeah. And it's a, a nice day at the park for Akil Badu. And this looks kind of feeble, but as a hitter, this is a beautiful thing. They're shifting you. Take what they give you, because when you're an athlete like Akil Badu, we have the new new rules, new bases. Anytime he's on base, that's a positive for the Tigers lineup. So I think that's something that, you know, I think he's going to continue to try to do. Like Simo said, making contact. I know we all want, you know, the highest X of below, but I say sometimes it's all about just tickling it just enough. <laughs> <laughs> just tickling just, it just, just a little bit. Just tickling it. We, we don't always got to kill the ball, you know, so I, I love that. Well, he was laughing all the way down to first base. Ryan Kreidler takes one inside, and Brendan Davis takes second base. Davis pinch running for Akil Badu. I stood up beside Brendan Davis today, and it seemed like when he stood up out of his seat, he just kept going. Yeah, good guy, though, huh? A really, really good young man, and really enjoyed talking to him, and you know, my first day in, and he was already, you know, trying to pick my brain and ask questions, and I, I just love that. Guys that are inquisitive want to learn and get better. Davis, a really good golfer, by the way. 
Kreidler swings and misses and it's two and one Davis was claimed off waivers from the Giants back not too long ago and then traded from San Francisco to Detroit for cash originally the Dodgers fifth round pick good athlete Kreidler takes one in for a strike to even it up at two and two I think that tells you something about Davis and Scott Harris clearly something he liked when he was with the San Francisco Giants and Davis and seems to be kind of the trend chef you look yeah. around and this is an athletic team you, you see a lot of good athletes a team that could you know definitely be in the mix of figuring out ways to manufacture runs other than the homer and I think even with the new dimensions I think it might add a little bit of a spark to, to this offense so I, I like what the Tigers are trying to do as far as you know the kind of culture the kind of the team they're trying to build I think uh, you know it, it's definitely looking in the right direction and Davis was originally a second round pick of the Chicago White Sox his talent there Kreidler grounds one to third and the Tigers are out in the sixth but they're up big by six on Valley Sports is it too early to start planning for their inheritance at Comerica Bank, we don't think so. But Patrick's Day saved the date for Irish Heritage Night when the Tigers host the White Sox on September 8th. Special ticket packages are on sale right now and include a game ticket, an exclusive Irish Tigers jersey, plus a donation to the United Irish Societies. Go to tigers.com slash irish to get your tickets today. First pitch swinging, long fly ball left field, just out of the reach of Davis. And Oswald Peraza leads off the Yankees' seventh with a stand-up double. Oswald Peraza not wasting any time right here jumping on that fastball up in the zone Davis freshly into the game and you know how this works the ball will find you and not a bad route just a little bit out of the reach of Davis trying to get those legs loose trying to make sure you're ready to go that's how this game works Aaron Hicks will stand in again this is his fourth plate appearance. He's got a couple of walk, a couple of singles and a walk. Oswald Peraza, another one of those questions at shortstop for the Yankees. Another prospect showed extremely well last year. So they, the Yankees have some decisions they have to make. Also, it's not going to be easy for for Aaron Boone and staff to kind of figure out who's going to man that shortstop position. As we see, saw Isaiah, Isaiah kind of for left foot playing some center today trying to use him and turn him into more of a Swiss Army knife because he is so good defensively Hicks follows it away and you can't help but wonder AJ e. Hinch and who that 25th and 26th man or the number 12 and number 13 position players are going to be for him too because there's a lot of versatility in a lot of different areas on this team. Yeah, that's one thing I really, really like when you look around the diamond. There's so many guys that have pos positional versatility on this Tigers line, on this Tigers roster. When you talk about Matone, Kreidler, uh, Haas, can do so many different things. I think it's a good problem, eh? but then you also have guys like Nevin, who, you, you know, are uh, those bubble guys who are banged up right now with injury, uh, Palacios. Uh, there's so many guys who are extremely talented that can play different positions so I think you know when you watch how well they're also playing too you know yeah. usually guys kind of weed themselves out in spring training because you have some roles but you have so many guys you know really playing extremely well trying to force AJ Hinch's hand Andy Abanez who's still Andy in the Abanez, World yeah. Baseball Classic yeah. and then of course Cesar Hernandez has had a really nice spring too signed as a free agent if you could get him to a couple of years ago when he was dynamite for yes. Cleveland uh, how big of an impact he could have quality at bad yeah. I mean this is a Switch guy who, hitter yeah he can really you know play some good defense as well so when you talk about guys like that and then you start looking at how a roster may shape up you could have a potential you know roster of, of, of a nice mix of veteran guys and you know young youth of guys who are hungry and, and, and learning how to play at this big league level Hernandez was in AJ Hinch's office the other day saying I've, I've got my outfielder glove you know I, love I can it. go play outfield if you want and I think he's going to play this weekend and I love it and if you're AJ Hinch that's what you want you yeah. want guys you know who are seeing and buying into the vision and we had an opportunity to talk to, to Scott Harris and he said there will be things that happen and go on this year and and you're going to see matchups and you're going to see uh, guy, guys platooning and, and, and playing different roles and I just think it says a lot about the versatility 
they have on that roster. Spencer Jones with a line drive single to right. They're going to hold the runner at third, and the Yankees have pressure on Detroit here in the seventh with runners at the corners and only one down. Nice swing by Spencer Jones right here. A good job of Parker Meadows coming up. This ball is deep in right field, but doing a good job of cutting that distance down, coming up quick. Nice strong throw. That's, that's a nice throw right over the cutoff man's head, holding the run at first. And those are the other little things that you look for. Even though it's a guy that will start out in AAA, these are the little things, attention to detail that you look for in young players, and, and those are winning plays. An accurate throw to second base. Bobbled for a moment, but they get the out at first and a run scores. It's now 8-3 Detroit. And now a message from your Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. Today, returning AZ plan lessees can lease a Ford Escape for $259 a month for 24 months. In all likelihood, the final inning for Joey Wentz. That's pitch number 47 for Wentz to Wilmer Defoe. And it's high for ball one. Alex Fajardo scheduled to pitch next for Detroit. Wentz delivers and Diefel slams one deep left field. Brendan Davis drifting back and that's on the lawn. A two run blast for Wilmer Defoe, his first homer of the spring. And New York inches a little closer. Talk about depth. The Yankees have went out also and tried to add some depth. We've seen Jake Bowers. There where Modifo is taking advantage of that change up left up in the zone and you know we talk about that third pitch you know and, and, and the secondary stuff of, of Joey Wentz we talk about what's that third pitch and, and if you look at those numbers that's the pitch right there the change up is that hitters have had the most success, success, success against and that's a that's a pitch you know see that left up in the zone doesn't really do too much almost like a BP heater at 85 miles per hour. And, Wilmer Defoe taking full advantage of that pitch. 8-5 Detroit. This is Billy McKinney against Joey Wentz. Way out in front. Wentz quickly ahead 0-2. And in Joey Wentz's defense, he probably should have been out of that inning. They make that double play, you know, that ball bobble. So he's had a few blunders behind him on defense today. He hasn't pitched too, too terrible, just not a lot of help as well. Matt Manning started, lasted three and two thirds, gave up four hits, struck out four, and walked a man. Manning was able to work out of a bases loaded, nobody out jam in the second without allowing a run. Wentz has allowed two in the fifth, three so far in this inning, and this one's popped up. Shallow center. And Davis takes care of it. When we come back, we're hoping Craig Monroe has more conversations with more Tigers in an 8-5 Detroit lead. Catch Tiger Spring. A look at the this spring. We're back on the air with Ken Maven, Craig Monroe, and yours truly Monday against Toronto, and then the Braves on Wednesday. Both games here from Lakeland, both at 1 o'clock here on Valley Sports Detroit. Tigers just with nine more. Spring training games opening day is not far away against the Tampa Bay Rays. Justin Henry Malloy sends one to deep right field off the wall. Malloy with good speed hits the bag and now he's going to put on the brakes. And that's a good decision. He'll take the leadoff double here for Detroit in the seventh. Well, that carried, didn't it? I mean, if you're A.J. Hinch, one thing you love after last night's game is a lot of barrels, a lot of balls been hit extremely well. And there's that power that we talk about right there. And just that ball carry from Malloy, I think he thought he missed it, and that ball just kept going. But it shows that talent that he has. Here's Andrew Knapp. He's only had two hits today. <laughs> one traveled 385 feet for a home run and the other was 418 feet for a home run. It's not a bad day to drive in three. And how good do you feel, Shep, when you do it on both sides of the plate right. as well? Too. Right, yeah. Well, you know, one thing you got the lefty stroke going, but you know, <laughs> you leave the day and you're going, man, I'm feeling right off both sides of the dish. So 
You have to love that if, if you're Nat right now. You just stare down Aaron Boone and say, bring anybody you want, the righty or the lefty. I can hit That's home it. runs against exactly. either one. Got under this one. And a fly ball to center. And ooh, a collision at the last moment. What good base running by Justin Henry Malloy, huh? What a great job of reading that situation right there. And you watch him run the bases. You watch him work himself back just to see if there might have been a collision. He's got a great view watching these guys close in on each other. Glad both of those guys are okay, but this is a great job of base running. And these, again, are those little things that you want to see from your young players if you're A.J. Hinch. Taking full advantage, not just being happy that you just hit one off the wall and, you know, you had a good, having a good day off the bench, but doing the little things as well. Those are winning plays. It's just good baseball, you know, good fundamentally sound baseball, and they work at it. You, Simo and I were watching before the game today how they're stressing their infield play and when they're tagging up, picking up coaches, all the little things that oftentimes get overlooked in the game of baseball. New York with the infield in against Parker Meadows, who's ahead in the count 2-0. I truly believe, I, I truly believe, Chef, that, you know, good baseball is contagious. Mm -hmm. When guys are around you and making the right plays, doing the right things, it makes you as a teammate want to be in that same situation, want to be in that same mix. Ball's outside, and it's 3-0 to Parker Meadows. Bright future for this young man. <laughs> a big fan of Parker Meadows. You know, it's the, the case of the little brother chasing the big brother. And, and it, time after time, we see that pan out where that little brother ends up being just as talented, or if not at, more talented. And I think whenever you have somebody you can chase, it says a lot. And this guy, I think the sky's the limit, extremely high ceiling. And he's got an edge about him that you really, really enjoy watching. Love what his brother says about him. He says, I want to be like him. That's the older brother talking about the younger brother. Way out in front, it's three and two. He wants to just get the ball in the air, right? Give Henry Malloy a chance to score from third. Won't get that chance. Parker Meadows draws a walk. Select your seat for the 2023 season on Sunday, March 26th from 10 a.m. till 5 p.m. at Comerica Park. Purchase a 1901 Society membership starting at just $7 per game and receive exclusive member-only benefits, plus your chance to meet Tigers alumni Andy Dirks, Dave Roseman, and many more. For more information, visit tigers.com slash seat today. Here's Roberto Campos. This is an interesting prospect for the Tigers. Who's idle, by the way, is Jose Abreu as he takes strike one. Signed in July of 2019 at the age of 16, awarded the largest signing bonus the Tigers have ever given an international prospect at the time. Meadows with good speed at first. On the corner, Campos is behind 0 2. Long pause by Garcia. Two to get rid of the ball, and there's the timeout by Campos. That's the timeout used by Campos. So his first and only. Outside, they thought Meadows might be going, so the pitch out was called. It's one and two. And that's one of those things, Shep, where you know you get in the moment and, and you're competing. And especially for me sitting up here, you know, you call one timeout, and the guy, the next pitch goes to hold again. And you got to remember not to do it again. You got to rem remember you're out of timeouts because that's one of those situations where I know me as a hitter, I might have stepped out again. Yeah. But you got to really make these adjustments, and the guys are doing a good job of picking up on it this spring, and, and a lot of guys. Speaking highly of it as well, but 
There's the violation right there for Garcia. It's now two and two to Campos because the pitch clock, he had 20 seconds and it ran out on him. So there's the violation we were talking about. And Campos swings and misses and strikes out for out number two. That was an interesting sequence right there. Yeah. You know, batter call time. Uh, David Garcia long looks in, violation on his behalf. But doing a good job of not letting it affect him. Staying, you know, locked in on that bat and making his pitch when he needed it. And you're going to be see some guys out there who, who are notoriously slow workers that are going to have to make adjustments. And we're going to see how they adjust if they get behind. But he did a good job of making sure he stayed locked in and, and making his pitch. And you're seeing pitchers take advantage of the pitch clock, too. The batter has to be ready by eight seconds, but that doesn't mean he has to pitch by eight seconds. Cruz on that, or Garcia on that last at bat against Campos, a couple times had it go all the way down to two. Yeah, and I think that, you know, for the crafty guys out there that, you know, guy like Nestor Cortez, per se, yeah. you know, guys that switch their angles and, and, and things like that. Like you said, Chef, you could mess around with timing a lot. It's a good play at short to end the inning. Tigers strand a couple, but lead by three on Valley Sports. Numbers fill our lives. Our lives. Counter. One of five home runs hit by the Tigers on this Friday afternoon, propelling them to an 8-5 lead over the New York Yankees with a couple of innings to go. Now let's go under the arm of Craig Monroe and Akil Badu, courtesy of Mary Grove Awnings. I'm down here, yes, in the Mary Grove Awning with Yabba Dabba Do and do it well, hitting this home run out to right field. And you just told me off camera you got Jim. Come on, man. You got the head out there a little bit, right? I definitely got the head out there, man. Got a good pitch to hit and put a good swing on it, man. What pitch was it? I, th I thought it was a slider. Was it a backup slider? Yeah, it was kind of like a backup slider. That's what it was. Slider over the plate and put a good swing on it. Oh, Being ready for the pitch one, so that's what that was right there. Tell me what kind of adjustments have you made, though? A lot of talk about with Scott Harrison, a lot of talk about commanding, controlling the strike zone. Is that something that you've really embraced and you're trying to get yourself to that level where you can do more damage? Yeah, that's definitely what I strive for, you know what I mean? So when you're controlling the strike zone, giving yourself more opportunities to hit and hit for a high average and get on base. So that's always big for me, and that's something I always carry each and every at-bat, you know, from, from the get-go, you know what I mean? Being selective and getting a good pitch to hit and putting my ace swing on it. Well, I'm looking at you, Quepo. That means your body, you slimmed down a little bit. You're in great shape. What did you do in the offseason to get yourself in this kind of shape? Yeah, it was just more so just power and just making sure my body's as loose as possible just so I can move around as quick as possible and take advantage of these, these new rules with the, the base ceiling and everything. So I want to make sure I'm at my, my full potential, make sure I feel my best, and that's what that's how I feel right now. So. Well, I'm glad you brought the new rules. How challenging has it been with the pitch clock, getting yourself in and out of the box, uh, and then also with the bases being smaller, do you feel like you can be more aggressive on the base pass? Yeah, I feel like with the time clock, you know, you just got to make sure you, you shorten up your little routine, whatever you kind of do. And uh, once you shorten that up and you know, like, how much time you have, you really don't worry about the clock because you know you have enough time. And uh, with the shorter bases, I mean, it's definitely an advantage, I feel like, for the base running, just given the fact that it's a shorter distance, less pickoff moves you have. So, you know what I mean? So it's something I'll take advantage of as well and use my legs, man, you know what I mean? So it's something I'll be a lot more aggressive, definitely. Let me ask you this. Do you feel any pressure? You know, given that you, you're competing, there's no doubt. It's been it's well documented. You're competing for a roster spot. Do you feel the pressure this spring, or are you more are you able to relax and just allow your ability to just take over? Yeah, I kind of tell myself each and every year, even if, like last year when I, I knew I had a job, that I'm always fighting for a job. You know what I mean? Keeping that mindset just so I can stay hungry and uh, always stay ready to go. So I always had that mindset, and uh, there's no pressure, man. The only pressure I, I put on myself is when I look in the mirror, and if I put that pressure on, other than that, there's no other pressure there. How about this clubhouse? I mean, I walked in the other day, and it, it just seemed like there's a togetherness. There's some camaraderie inside this clubhouse. Am, am I seeing that correctly? Am I feeling what you guys are displaying in that clubhouse every day? Definitely. I feel like everyone's bought in. You know what I mean? The whole process, the whole uh, idea of this year is, is to win games and, and to change this, this team into a winning culture. You know what I mean? The, this, the whole atmosphere is, is good vibes. And uh starts from the high levels with Scott, like you said, and A.J., and everyone else is bought into the process of the only thing we, the only goal we have is to win games and, and to have fun and, and win a championship. That's the only goal. What's your impression of the new guys, guys that we got from Soto from the Phillies? You know, in the trade with Soto, we've got uh, Verlin and we also got Mayton. Tell me a little bit about your, what, what's your impression of those guys? 
Yeah, he's on Nick Maton. That's that's Wolfie. Call him Wolfie. And uh, and Matty V. Yeah, those those guys are good good guys, man. You know what I mean? Real humble and uh, they work hard and they and they have fun, man. You know what I mean? That's the type of ball club and that's the type of players we want in this organization. And uh, I feel like that's going to help us in the long run. So it was, it was fun first meeting them and and now considering them as my teammates and friends, so they're good good people. Are you finding yourself though now? You've got a couple years in the big leagues going into year three. Do you find yourself though, and maybe even having a little bit more more say, having being a little bit more of a veteran leadership on this team? Yeah, I mean a little bit, but you know I kind of lean on guys like Scopey and and Miggy entering his his uh, last year and uh, and Javi as well. Those guys, you know what I mean. So just kind of being a sponge, learning as much as I can from them and. And kind of bringing my best each and every day and do whatever I can so the team can win because that's the only goal. All right, and then on the defense, last but not least, on the defensive side, I mean, obviously being able to play left field, you play some center field. Which one are you most comfortable at? And then on top of that, which one did you put in the most work <laughs> on this offseason? Everywhere. I can play everywhere. Play right field as well. I play right field. I played a lot of right field at, uh, during the spring training. I played left and I played center all my life, so I'm comfortable everywhere. All right. Put me out there. No you heard it. You heard it. Yabba dabba do. Ready for 2023. Go out and have a great season, man. All right, Chip. That's a good conversation. It's it, you know, it's it's hard not to like him. I mean, he's got an infectious smile, he's yeah. got a great attitude, and you you root for guys like that because you can tell he's been putting in the work. Yeah, he can. His body looks great. He like he said, he looks flexible, he looks a lot looser at the plate. And all the guys are saying the right thing. We talk about yeah. that culture, Shep, and, and you can hear guys buying in to what A.J. Hinch and staff are trying to do, Scott Harris as well, you know, controlling the zone. That's important. Those are winning attributes that, that the winning team do. They control the zone. Uh, you know, they don't punch out a lot. They put the ball in place. So to hear guys focusing on those winning things, I think is really huge for fans to hear and, and kind of understand, you know, what the vision is and what they're trying to do as a team. I think that was a, a great conversation. This one ripped to left and a base hit. New York already with two runs here in the inning on the two run blast off Alex Fayedo. Alex Fayedo in a wall side windows pitching change. The fourth pitcher used for Detroit today. He comes in, he gets a fly ball to center, a walk to the number nine hitter, then a two run homer before registering the second out of the inning. And now the single. Another hit. This one to center. They go first to third. And New York is 90 feet away from tying it up. When this is the time in those spring training games, Chef, when you start seeing double flaps and high numbers, but these guys are trying to make a name for themselves as well. They don't care who's on the bump. And you see that right there. A nice swing by Jones driving that ball to center field and a good job of base running as well taking advantage with two outs Jones has had a couple of good swings yeah he, he is a good looking prospect yeah, really is. good body good makeup great short swing good approach you, you know the Yankees definitely doing a good job of scouting as well but meanwhile Alex Fajardo is having some some trouble settling in here a little bit yeah he's another guy that you know they're trying to figure out what's his role going to be he's bounced around a lot you know starter reliever trying to figure out what he does extremely well you know as a guy with a three pitch mix but I think you know still trying to find that put away pitch Shep and I think that's difficult you know at this level when you you know you have good stuff but you have a tough time you know putting guys away you know it can be difficult and I think that's what you're seeing right now still trying to figure out you know who he is and I think the role what the role is going to be for Alex Fajardo I, I think sometimes you know you have to be ready and willing for different things but some guys need to figure out what their role is going to be so that they can you know, focus and kind of hone in on, on what they're trying to do. How much more beneficial is it for someone to already know their role instead of trying to prove their role to the manager? I think it's huge, and I think it, it's it's it says a lot about AJ Hinch. What he does, he, he takes that confusion out. One thing I know about AJ Z, he was always always has been really good uh, at communicating. You know, when we're in Houston, he would. You know, tell me a week before, especially in a matchup role, hey, Cam, it might be five days, but but look at the lefties coming in five days from now. Be ready. That's your day. So being ready and being told and, and being kind of, you know, ready for your, your opportunity and knowing what your situation is going to be, I think really helps you prepare for those situations. But 
for some guys, they need to know. They want to know, hey, this is my role. This is what you need out of me. And it kind of takes the thinking out of it for them. Upstairs, and it's one and two to T.J. Rumfield. Well, you see how the Tigers infield is positioned. That shortstop just past the mound. It, it, so it's not the shift, but it's as close as you can get to second base, expecting Rumfield, you know, to test the middle. Swung on and missed, and Fajardo gets out of it. Does give up a couple on the two-run homer. Yankees are within one. Tigers with another at-bat coming up here in the bottom of the eighth. Varsity Ford in Back in Lakeland, time now for our Comerica Bank game summary. The Tigers, Cam Maben, have used their strength. Five home runs today have proved seven of the eight runs they've scored. It's been refreshing. 38 home runs on the spring to lead the entire spring, not just the Grapefruit League, but even the Cactus League. Andrew Knapp had a couple. We heard from Akil Badu in the last half inning with our Craig Monroe, and he belted his second home run of the spring. Tyler Danish is in for New York, and he's facing Jermaine Palacios to start. Palacios swings and misses. Second at bat for Palacios today. Struck out first time up. Jake Holton to follow and then Brandon Davis. That's all the way to the backstop. Tigers jumped out to a big, big early lead. They were up 7-0 through three. New York scored a couple in the fifth. Detroit answered with one in their half of the fifth and then Three runs by the Yankees in the seventh, two more in the eighth have gotten them to within a run, and Palacio swings through it. First out registered there in the eighth. Craig Monroe has worked his way back up from the Mary Grove Mornings report to the booth with us. It's good to have you back. Good stuff with uh, especially Akil Badu. That was a lot of fun. I always have fun with those guys, man. Uh, and I love the relationship that I'm building. And that's what's important, especially, I think, even being a broadcast, just the, the relationships, the trust factor. Uh, and that's, so I think I feel like I have that with those two young men, Scope and Yabba Dabba Do. So, Scope. no, it's been good. It's always fun. Yeah, Scope with the World Baseball Classic, a uh, number of times he's been able to represent his country. It's so important for players in all of baseball. I don't care if you're a superstar like Mike Trout or Shohei Otani or, or somebody who's getting their first feel for it. It's a big deal to him, isn't it? Yeah, it, it really is. And, and you can see and, and hear the elation in, in Scope's voice. But, you know, see, when you're talking to Scope, you know, you've been around these guys for a couple of years now. And, you know, for me, when I look look and listen at, to that interview, did it not seem like there was a different type of enthusiasm in his voice, of, uh, a different type of excitement about getting back out here this year and rebounding and letting people know, hey, I'm still an extremely good big league player and I can still do this at a high level? No, I definitely feel that. And I think, you know, the, the atmosphere inside the clubhouse and then the camaraderie that he walked into yes. kind of ignited that even more so. And so he was excited and chomping at the bits uh, to get going. And that's what we talked about, that culture. When, when veteran guys like Scopey say, hey, put me anywhere. You know, I'm buying into whatever they need me to do. You know, guys like Kill Badu, it's only right for them to say, I can play anywhere. They yeah. fall in the suit. And, and you love that. And like I said, it's a different buzz in this clubhouse. And barring any injuries, and you still don't have Javi back, who looks extremely, uh, you know, good right now playing in the WBC. He's got a little bit of a pep in his step. He's got a little bit of excitement that he's playing with. And, and then having Miggy on his farewell tour. So I think if you can add all that together with health, you know, I think you really could have a formidable team that can really compete, especially when you start to look at this balanced schedule as well. Well, you look at our division. Exactly. I, I, the Central's open. I think the Central is open, and I really believe this, guys. I believe the Tigers will surprise some teams uh, this season. Chicago's got a lot of talent as Davis follows it away, but lost Jose Abreu, gained Andrew Benintendi. Lost, of course, Liam Hendricks. Our thoughts are with him as, as he tries to recover from illness. And, 
But you know, Minnesota bringing back Carlos Correa is a big that deal. They huge, add Joey Votto, for huge, example. Huge low, bringing in Lopez yep. and that trade was huge. Yeah, Pablo Adam. Lopez is yep. a son of a gun. He, he is tough. He really I do not is. miss facing him. <laughs> 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 you know you're going to get a sinker, and now you're still swinging at the sinker on the hands. I mean, <laughs> there's the standings from a year ago. The Guardians ran away with it. I mean, but think about this, Shep. Guardians were the youngest team yeah. in baseball. And the one thing that they did well, well, two things they did well. Yes. They make contact. Boom. And they catch the baseball. Yes, they do. <laughs> and that's why <laughs> they ran away with it. It's a win. It's a Give it to me again. again. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a win-win. Yeah. Set a franchise record with four gold glovers, did the Guardians. Jimenez, Quan, Straw, and Bieber. That that's special. Yeah, that, that says a lot. And yeah. I'm sure there's a, probably another guy in there who probably was in the mix when you talk about how well they filled their position. And that's fun, you know. Tito Francona, what he's able to do and how he he's able to get young guys to just be the best version of themselves. I always say, you know, it's tough to be, uh, you know, Craig Monroe. It's tough for me to come up here and be shit, but I don't think I can do it. Try to be the best version of myself. And when you get 25 guys in the, on the roster to buy into that, now you have 25 captains. You have 25 yeah. leaders instead of waiting on that one guy to lead. Now you have the guys leading in their own way. And I think that gets lost in translation sometimes when you talk about, you know, winning attributes of a team. Food for thought in the future. Rather be Craig Monroe than me. No, I mean, <laughs> I said with two good ones, you know, I'm not complaining. Davis sends one high in the air down the left field line. And what a catch. Wow. That's a heck of a play. Wow. Rosario went over near the wall and somehow, some way, found the baseball and kept it for the that is third out in the eighth. Play. Nice, sure was. nice play. Stop it. Nice play. As we continue our coverage of Tigers spring training, tune in Monday at 1 o'clock. Watch the Tigers take on the Toronto Blue Jays here in Lakeland. Cameron Maven, Craig Monroe, Dan Petrie, and yours truly will be on hand. Only right here on Valley Sports Detroit. And the Valley Sports app, spring training baseball, brought to you by our friends at Mary Grove Awnings. What a day it has been. A lot of free baseballs out there. A couple homers by the Yankees. Five home runs hit by the Tigers. Alex Fajardo trying to finish things off against Grant Richardson to lead off the ninth. There's going to be a lot of fans leave here happy today. A lot of souvenirs. Give the fans what they want, Give them right? Give what they want. Well, you're three outs away from getting what you want. That W. You're right. Yeah. Way out in front. One and one. It has been a fun day, though, so far. A lot of good storylines that we've touched on. Had some good interviews. A.J. Hinch joined us earlier. And Alex Fajardo with back-to-back -back solid off-speed pitches to make it one and two. And I don't know if he went in and had a conversation, but his rhythm and tempo, it was the last inning, but it looks a lot better right now. He's getting the ball, getting the sign, and going. And, and right there, you know, getting rewarded for, for picking up the pace a little bit. Where do you notice that most? How, how did you pick it, that up? It just, it just seemed like the last inning that was out there, he just he seemed a little off with his rhythm. You know, it's a little methodical, waiting for the sign. But you watch these, this, this sequence right here. I mean, he was getting the sign, getting the pitch, looking at his target, and just pitching with confidence. And I think that's the difference between Alex Fado when he's really good is pitching with conviction. If he does that, he's tough to deal with. But I think sometimes he goes out there and he looks a little apprehensive at times. But right now, trust it. Trust the guy behind the dish and let's go. Make your pitches and, and trust the people behind you. Ground ball right side on a base hit for Mickey Gasper. Tying run is aboard for New York. Now a message from your Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. Your Southeast Michigan Ford dealers have vehicles ready for you to drive home today. Returning AZ plan lessees can lease a Ford Escape for $259 a month for 24 months. Man aboard. Fayetto back out of the stretch against Jesus Bastidas. Low and away, 1-0. Oh. Simo, you talked about the Guardians and their ability to make contact and see that last hit through the five hole right there. And that's what I'm looking forward to. The, the fans want to see offense. And I think when you, you know, these shift restrictions, I think what it does is it incentivizes guys to put the ball in play more. I you think know, so, too. When we came up, yeah, you want to hit the ball hard, but you heard a lot. Give yourself a chance. Put the ball in play. You know, when you're walking back to the dugout, you know, after a punch out, you didn't give yourself a chance. So I think... 
just opening up the infield a little bit more is going to incentivize guys. Hey, you know, I might get rewarded if I put the ball in play. Doesn't always have to be hard contact. And we're also going to see the the athleticism again. Middle infielders. The middle infielders. We're going to see those diving, those nice diving plays getting up and throwing yeah. out your guy. I won't say any names, but <laughs> certain guys don't belong in the middle of the infield. <laughs> you know, it, it brings back the athlete. You know? yeah. If I'm a pitcher, I don't want to look back Here behind me and Here see a guy go. that probably should be at third base playing short. Because I'm not going down that road you with know, you. I won't say any names. Don't say any names. But I'm just saying, I'd let, hey, that's uh, well, it was and used to be a very athletic position. Shortstop, second base center field like that's where you put your premium athletes that show range and ability so you're right it's going to add more value to those guys once again like a, a guy like d gordon who's out there oh yeah you know one of the best defenders in the game mm -hmm. well why isn't he on the team that guy has range out of this world so i think it, it, it's going to bring the athlete back add more value to him that's a center fielder speaking by the way folks <laughs> it, um, is. it is <laughs> and, and you could you could argue it in, in at the shortstop position it's as deep as perhaps we've seen it in the last Two decades. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, I think it's easy to argue it. I mean, we could make a list right now of 10 that are and probably somebody's favorite player and they'll, they'll argue are, is the best, you know. And, and, and we could argue who the top 10 in fringe, top 10 shortstops are. That's how deep the position is, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Who stands out for you guys? For me, Carlos Correa right away. For me, Trey Turner is my uh, guy. Yeah. I, Trey mean, I think Trey Turner is yeah. the best shortstop in the game. But how about the Houston Astro the guy, too? Seeger. I mean, Pena. Pena. Oh, I mean, Pena. Yeah. Exactly. Pena looks really good. Listen, Dansby career. Swanson. He's another guy that I think is going to be great for the Cubs as well. There's the athleticism you were just talking about. Yeah. Justin Henry Malloy diving down the line to rob the Tistas of extra bases for the second out. Yeah, and check out the cat-like reflexes here. I mean, he, he showed it, you know, at the dish, going deep, missing the ball, still going off the wall. But right here, just quick feet, great setup, ready to go, ready to make a play. So important to anticipate that um, ball being hit, watching the ball in the strike zone, right? And knowing, like, where you can see the bat head. You can see that bat angle, and he read that bank bat angle well, and he was off and running before the ball was even hit. Well, you watch Justin Henry Malloy take infield practice. He gets so upset if he doesn't get every single ball, even though there's no way you could possibly get some of them or hit his way. But he said, I just expect to make every play. And what a play he made there. Love that attitude, too. Fajero's ahead 0-2. And it's all about what do you take from these spring training games? Well, this last inning, I think Fajardo needs to go back to the video and watch his tempo. This pace is, this is the pace that he needs to work with. He's got a great rhythm, great feel. Got him. Strands the tying run at second and holds on for a one-run win. 8-7, Tigers win it, propelled by five home runs. We'll wrap it up from Lakeland when we come back after this on your home for Tigers baseball, Valley Sports. Catch these offers while you can. <laughs> uh, Tigers baseball on Valley Sports is brought to you by Comerica Bank. Raise your expectations of what a bank can be. Come to Comerica. By your Metro Detroit Chevy dealers. Put it in D and see why Chevy drives the Motor City. And by Mary Grove Awnings, home of Michigan's best made shade. Luck of the Irish is on the Tigers' side today. High-scoring affair. They win at 8-7 behind five home runs, and that will be no doubt the theme. But Craig Monroe, Matt Manning had an important start and fared well, didn't he? Yeah, he, he really did. Uh, I, I just really loved the way he attacked the hitters. Uh, I thought he had his foot on the gas pedal early enough, and he threw pitches with intent. He used his fastballs to both sides of the plate, and we also saw him go to that slider. It was a better slider. It was tighter with more depth. Like to see more of that moving forward. Yeah, and I really enjoy how he pitched at the top of the zone. I think when he got in trouble, the one thing that I really enjoy watching him do is not give in. It's one thing to give in, but it's also nothing to make your pitches. He was dominant in the zone, pitched to different quadrants instead of just giving in, saying, hey, here it is, hit it. And I think that's where you want to see the growth with Matt Manning. You want to see how he handles those big situations when traffic gets out there, not fall apart, not to try to do too much, but trust his stuff and the defense behind him. I enjoyed the win, but I enjoyed working with these two guys just as much. It was an absolute blast. Great to have you guys here in Lakeland. Can't wait for Monday as well. The Tigers will take on the Blue Jays right here on Valley Sports. Hope you can join us at 1 o'clock. They win it over the Yankees. Oh, 
Sounds good, smells good, feels, feels good. good. Eight seven for Craig Monroe, Cam Maven, our entire Valley Sports Detroit Tigers team. I'm Matt Shepard saying so long from Lakeland. Thanks for watching. Tigers win at eight seven. Enjoy St. Patrick's Day and all weekend long, everybody. It's time to.